Chasing the Racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki, part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles. Three, two, one and welcome back to Chasing the Racing episode 173 and we're delighted to be joined by Michael Howarth. We're down, at, down in Coventry, just outside Global Moto Coventry and we've uh, just been for a quick tour. What, what did you think lads? There's a lot of bikes in there, isn't there? Yes, um, I. I didn't kind of realise what sort of scale it was, um, the job you're on with down here, because I knew it was something to do with, is it Royal Enfield and BSA you're, you're kind of primarily with? Yeah. Uh, but no, it's it's a fair old outfit. It makes my my new venture, where we've got six bikes in a lock-up and a, and a workshop that we've borrowed, look like um, shite, to be fair, <laughs> is, is the honest answer. I thought we were going big, and uh, no, like I said before, I'm like, no, I'm like a skint Brad Clark. <laughs> I've got the white shoes and everything. I've got tight jeans like him. I'm just not as portly. I mean, well, it's a lot thinner, a lot thinner. But anyway. <laughs> And, uh, I love I'm, you Brad I'll I, I tell you what I'm really generally looking forward to this podcast solely because I was on the phone with Chris and I was like is he, is he good crack and Chris goes oh aye and I'm going well you haven't disappointed at all I think we've, we've been down in Coventry for what the whole of 40 minutes it feels like a lifetime in a good way I feel I feel like I should be at your wedding to be fair I will, um, the, about 18 months so, excuse me what the wedding's in 18 months well if yeah, when was once I get on one knee it's getting back up off the floor that'll be the fucking problem for me but yeah she's uh, <laughs> She's expecting. Um, I'm sure you were going to move into. Uh, I've just had a young'un. Um, right, congratulations. That is eleven weeks old. I had to ask her what his birthday was yesterday, and it was. It's not. We've not been that long ago since he was born, and I was at the birth, surprisingly. <laughs> and I still don't know the date of his birth. I know what time it was, which was very interesting because he was a cesarean birth after twelve hours of labour. Oh God! That lazy cow of a missy decided she wanted to be cut up, and so yeah, oh, okay, lazy bollocks. Let's go and do this. You know, let's go and waste more at NHS's money. So we took her down, <laughs> and they cut him out as you do when he's screaming at the bart, and they put the time of his birth down at five twenty-seven. Now they could have just rendered it off five twenty-five, five thirty, etc. Um, but the poignancy of that is, my best friend Carl Harris from racing, who unfortunately passed away when on the TT, his race number was five, and mine is twenty-seven. So when I phoned my mother up until that, my mum was in tears and a few, a few of his friends were like, oh, fucking hell, you know, it's, um, yeah, it was quite um, emotional at that point. But yeah, I know he's grand. And then he was but in you hospital. can't remember the day though. <clears throat> no, but then, to be fair, my mum's 70 something. Oh, she's 60. I don't know. My mum's old anyway. And um, <laughs> and I don't know her birthday. And she's been around all my life. So the boy's going to be looking. My missus will prod me when, he's, when it's his birthday and, you know, we'll just buy him something. I'm going to crack on, I'm not. Yeah. Probably be a motorbike to be fair. It is his first birthday. I want him to go play golf. To be honest, I think it's away from it right. for now. That is a good <clears throat> parenting idea. That and darts. That, that much, yeah. darts. Do you know what they get paid a bloody fortune for throwing yeah. arrows? For for lobbing bits of yeah. I'm, it, yeah, I'm willing for that, me. You seen Chris's brain ticking over here? Man. <laughs> I can learn to play darts on the night time while I'm not at work at BSAs and then fund the racing from there. So there we go. If you could go right back to being like a kid and you could focus on one sport to get to the top, is it darts that you do? Unfortunately, it's motorcycle racing, but it's there's no money in it, is it? So we know, but no. It's mad, isn't it? Because you know we've all be we all love this sport, and that's why we're all here. But it's every other sport seems simpler, doesn't it? it no, 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 no. From an outside well, looking in, I'm, I'm over yeah. like I'm, I'm simplifying that fact. But for me, golf, you're hitting a ball, and I bet golfers probably think of us as where well, you're just opening a throttle up and breaking a little later, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. You know well, my, my point. My history before we got into bike racing, which we'll, we'll get to later. I started off life as a professional rugby player, rugby league player, which Larry Carter rips the piss out before because there's no evidence really because it was pre-internet. There's some old paper cuttings my mother's got and it was a team called Keithley Cougars that I signed for. Um, and <laughs> Keithley <laughs> Cougars, go on, you fighter. <laughs> and I went, to, I went and played for Oldham and then I, um, I was off to Wigan, so I kind of was getting there then. And I got sent back to play the winter thing in the local local club uh, back in Tomlin and snapped my leg in it off. And then that was like, I tried to get back to where I was pre prior to that because I was, I was fantastic at rugby without being vain and very average at motorcycle racing. But I still got to where I wanted to go. Um, so, yeah, I, I tried to get back playing rugby and it was never my passion. It was just like, I'm far too lazy to carry a fucking job. So I, th I used it as an excuse and, and to earn some money. And then... After 12 months of kind of not doing much, I thought, what am I going to do here? Um, and I bought a Honda SP1. 
and I've just we've just bought another one for the for the show. I loved it. But I went to the track day at Cadwell Park. And I get there. And I'd I'd had bits of road bikes and motocrosses as, as kids and such. But I'm going round, I'd just chuck myself at fast group, like in for a penny, in for a pound, like you. And I'm going past all these bikes that I thought were race bikes. I thought, you know, I'm getting swans here. I'm flying. <laughs> So then that got that got shut off um, and got myself a, a Ducati 996 race bike. Um, this is how quick I got from club racing to this big. It's six. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it was an absolute donkey of a thing. The, the rear shock didn't have any rebounder on, but it didn't matter then because you weren't fast enough to make it to fit suspension changes to make any difference. If it stopped great, if it went great, that was it. And the first club meeting I did was at Cadwell and... I think they turned the lights off at the clubhouse by the time I finished. They were that far back. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> dog shit. But you would be, But when I got this SP1, because I've passed all the... I didn't realise they were just lads that did track days on track day bikes. You so thought I they thought, were legit yeah, racers. I thought, I'm, oh, yeah, here we go. I'm on this. Um, so, yeah, the first race, and then I, I spoke to a few people and, and learned a massive amount in a few weeks before the next round. And somehow finished third in the New Year Assembly Thunder Championship that year. That was all four. Um... And Michael Pensavali that owns a, a bike shop now. I think he, he used to be part of Wee Banny Bike or something. But so his dad helped me and, and kind of it was called HBR Racing. How is budget racing? Because we had nothing, like proper skin. We had we, as a family we, we were didn't have any money at all. So I did that, and then in two thousand and five, uh, Pensavali he bought one of Troy Bayliss's old nine nine six, a proper thing. So he went to do BSB. We're like, oh, come come and do BSB with me. So I went and did Super Stock Cup, as it was at the time. There was 2,000 CC championships then in 2005, like the beginners and, and the experts. So I did the season in that. I had a, I nearly finished on the podium at Alton Park, but I fell off, which is a bit of a... <laughs> it's a cliche. What did I do? Fall off? Oh, you know, yeah. Um, <laughs> how do you go on? How do you fall off? <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got more air miles from being airlifted to hospital than I have from fucking flying anywhere to on holiday. Um <laughs> So, so I did that season, a couple of fair results and did all right. And then in 2006, someone come up to me in December at the bike show and said, do you want to ride our super bike next year? I was like, aye. They went, have you got 20 grand? And I went, aye. I have a pot to piss in. Nor a window to throw it out of. Like, literally, I'm thinking, right, well, if I sell this to the next 10, I've got Still nowhere near, but we, but we managed and we sorted it <clears throat> as a family. So with, from a club race, two years prior, what? I was racing against Shaky Burn in within I did a one season at the British Superbike level before I jumped on the superbike. <laughs> and, and not because I was I, I mean, I obviously always qualified and in my first year I won a superbike cup race at Cadwell Park. I had a couple of podiums at Croft, you know, and, and in the wet I was very good, but I had no time to learn. I was just in at the deep end and fucking go for it. <laughs> Dom's looking in amazement. That's that's my racing career from that, and, and then obviously it's a present day doing bits. And I heard Alan Carter on, on your previous podcast say how quick he got to GPs. Now he went to GPs, so fair play to him. But they did an awful lot of riding at that time because they were racing in so many different classes. You had, you know, you had lots of practice, but mm -hmm. we didn't. I can track days were few and far between once we start racing because you just can't afford to do it, can you? So, yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> so can we can we go back a little bit, fit, like a lot, 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 lot further? You know, before you broke your leg and everything like that. So, like, where did it all like? Was it bikes, rugby, or was it rugby the bikes? I meant like you know the love. Oh, the love was always bikes. Absolutely, right. oh, always bikes. I mean, <clears throat> now to to this day, my one well, because I've got my, my son there and the missus, but my passion is bikes. Hmm. I'm I always class myself as the luckiest bike racing fan in the world because I got to go and do it and sit on the other side of the fence and give it a whirl. You know, I've owned superbike teams, I've, I've done this and that, some with success, some without success. Um, so I just class myself as the luckiest lad to ever be, really, because I just, I got to live the dream. And mm -hmm. it, I, you know, I've forfeited so much up until now. I'm 44 years old, you know, I'm well past the bar. But I give up all my youth and my childhood and the, the chance of a house, misses kids, because all I gave about at that time was to go and race bikes and uh, and become something and it's weird how people now be like oh you, you know you're at back at grid sometimes you're a failure in bsb and like, I'm like hey, fuck, am i a failure two years mate two years to get there and i stayed there and, and i held me on and you know they've got some good results there i've gone around snetterton in the wet within a second of johnny ray and i've led a timesheet against keenari peter Hickman, simon andrews at the time all them so 
some people's goal, like I think Chrissy is the potential to be a regular top 10 finisher if, if he carries on and, and maybe get the podiums. I think Chrissy's goals are, are slightly higher than mine. Mine was to get to BSB and I did it. So I'm happy. So all the criticism and all the bullshit in the world, they can do one. I'm not bothered because I did it. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. I don't even, Chrissy, can you ask a question here? Because I'm just simply I have no idea where to go on this one. That is so, absolutely amazing. Back then, the uh, Superbike Cup was introduced. It was before the Evo Championship, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did. Two thousand in two thousand ten was the the year of the Evo Cup coming in, which they took away the traction control and such things. But the bikes we had back then in two thousand and six, it didn't have traction control, but it could have had if it wanted. All right. Uh, so what, what was what defined the cup? Um, pretty much kind of budget almost, and the newness to the to the series. So it was, it was a chance for the lads with the smaller budgets at the time to to get some TV exposure and stand on a podium to keep the, the sponsors happy. Because right. at that time, a, a, you know, Paul Bird Superbike, for instance, was a proper proper thing with the, you know full world superbike spec engines at that time with titanium rods and fancy pistons and everything, and you right. couldn't really afford to do that. And we got, in the end of 2006, we went to Honda and we bought some Hondas and, and then we run our own team in pretty much the same way you were. Just me, singular, um, through a lot of sponsorship from Tenor for Men, the piss bad people, we'll get to them. I sure do I love that. <laughs> um, and so I went, so this is this is when my, um, my life of crashing kind of started. But it wasn't my fault. So beginning of all seven, <laughs> we, we went. Title, can we just title that? Clip that. Greatest clip that. Like yeah. I did a lot of crash room, but none of them were my fault. <laughs> are, they, are they ever our fault? Really? <laughs> are they ever our fault? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. So the beginning of all seven, we went to Almeria. We bought the JGL Hondas. Uh, it was, and pretty much all of his team, and we we nicked it. We gave him forty grand for two bikes, and these are full, like Honda Britain spec super bikes. Uh, not HRC that were, that were around at the time, but the ones like Carl Harris was on the BLD Ondas and such. And all the tools and all the racking spare wheels, and we absolutely nicked it off, it, off him for nothing. Um, went to Almeria. Steve Plater had been on the bike the year before. And I went round Almeria faster than Steve. I thought, again, I've, I've got this. I've got this. Goes to the first round, we had to buy some new forks for one of the bikes because one of the bikes come there to set of forks. We bought some all in FGR 700s and Practice and qualifying went terrible. And Sunday morning warm up, we went out and we're going down towards Hawthorns at Brands Arch. And Shaky's at one side of me. So, you know, Shaky Burn, I'm riding with Shaky Burn. And, and Steve Plate was at the other. And I just given both like the finger and <laughs> set off. Because it was it was like the outlap of warm up, like I'm ever going to be faster than Shaky. And I got to Hawthorn as I tipped in, my front wheel went, look off, and disappeared off to the left. And then all oh, hell kicked loose, kicked off. <clears throat> um, Woke up with my right leg by my left ear. I thought, oh shit. Oh, that looks bad. So I've <laughs> kind of shoved it away. And at this point, I'm convinced, well, that's my leg gone. It's ripped off. It's just my leathers are holding it on, like, you know. Um, and they, they took me to hospital. I had four or five days in hospital. I'd snapped my femur, distal spiral fracture. Um, that was pleasant. I think I think yeah. a week later, I were back in the gym with that one. Um, but then we put Tristan Palmer on the bike. And it was only supposed to be for a couple of rounds until they got fit. And the Dick had started winning, like the Superbike Cup races. And we, like, I'm waiting two or three rounds and we're like, well, what do we do here? Do we say thank you very much, Tristan, for your time and put me back on it and see if we can get an odd result towards the end of the year? Or do we do we go for it and win the Superbike Cup? Um, and sure enough, in our first year as a Superbike team, we won the Superbike Cup Championship. Fly, Tristan was flying. Um, and then we moved on to 2008. We've got the Tenor for Men sponsorship, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But... Okay, okay, now you brought that up again. Right. <laughs> Whose idea was that? Tenor for Men? Like, um... was it just, you're just watching the telly in the bar and just went, I tell you what, there's a lot of blokes out there, like the blokes like motorcycles, and occasionally something goes wrong. So it, it came <laughs> it's via a market. It came through someone via the, via the family. They were working in a call centre that were taking... Tenor for Men's calls, like, I'm not really sure what you're supposed to... I've pissed me, Sen. 
Um, can you help me? Well, yes, we have a selection of pads, Mr. D- <laughs> Mr. Dingle. Yes, what do we- <laughs> we'll send you a packet out right now. There you go. Well, that's uh, slow strength, high strength, and no strength. Yes, just piss away. So, Did you just make that up, or was that actually... No, 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 that's is not that the range. No, that was just, just the range. <laughs> no, just I like, know what the range is now, because yeah. I've, 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 I've not tested them all. I've been through them all. We'll get to a testing story after. Um, but, yeah, so and just out of nowhere, the, the marketing manager came to walk around the, the, um, the call centre. And this person kind of got all of and said, hey, do you fancy doing this? And he went, it's not a bad idea that, you know. And they weren't really bothered so much for the advertising. They wanted to then raise awareness. So they, they come in at a small amount in 07 and give us, give us a few quid uh, as a personal sponsor, really. And then in 08, they decided, right, we want to do this properly. So we want the bike colours. So <laughs> we, me and Tristan turned up because we kept Tristan for the year after and I'm fit again now. For the first test at Snetterton, everything's been kept under wraps. So, me, <laughs> you know, you come out for the photo that you, you've been there, haven't you? And me and Tristan had to, we were right at the bottom of pit lane, we had to walk all the way up. We've got these blue leathers on that look, made us look like a shit Spider Man because of the lattice crap they put on. And this massive tenor for men badge. And even now we're going, fucking hell, we all are right, plant pots here. <laughs> <laughs> Proper plant pots. But then you're thinking, they give us the budget. You know, we've got, we bought two of Birdie's ex superbikes, his Hondas. And Tristan, he got a fifth place at one race and finished tenth in the championship. So we, within two years, we'd done really well then. And the marketing guy that sorted us out pulled it. He left the job at the end of the year, and that's when Tenor for Men pulled the plug because the new marketing manager, because it wasn't his baby, went. I'm going racing yachts. I'm like, cheers, mate. I, I must. I'm, I'm dying to ask this. How much brass did they actually give you? Uh, in total. And back then, bearing in mind, you know, this is before to you... To buy two the, birdie the, superbikes. Oh, they were under grand. They were under grand. What, for the pair of them? For the pair of them, yeah. Yeah, 50 grand apiece. Um, bearing in, we got two bikes previous from the year before, so I raced the old bikes and Tristan got the, the birdie bikes. Um, yeah, I think I think in total, it doesn't really matter seeing it now, I think the to- total was about three and a half hundred grand they put in. And back then, you could you could run it, you know what I mean? These... You know, you know how expensive it is that. now. It was it was tough. I mean, we were still bordering because a lot of the, the budget they give us had to be spent on certain things. It wasn't like, there's your budget, now there's all the clothes that you're going to do and there's your hospitality budget. It was like, you have to do it all for that. And we had an hospitality unit that uh, that had to fit 70 people in every meeting and yada, yada. But it was fun. In your opinion, <clears throat> can you still build a good team with that budget? A race-winning team? Be difficult. I wouldn't if you do super stock, maybe. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, uh, I, you know, it's curious. If curious. I could, <sighs> hmm, now then, in 2012, when I run the Kawasaki's that, that end up going pear shit, we got two bikes off, off uh, Nick. Um, and we put Ewe Main wearing on, and Ewe Main wearing was a very average rider at that time, and he started flying. So we had the right kit and the right people. It was a very, very small team, that, but it was very close-knit with the right people and the right people to speak to. So, yeah, I, I, for, for a one-man team, for, I, I think you could, but you've just got to keep that consistency there and, and have the right people. And yeah, it's, it just, it's, so, it's always them questions of the money flowing around. In terms of, like, racing yourself, uh, f- uh, as in, like, that being your main thing for the year, when was the last, uh, like, full sort of championship that you competed in? The last full season, yeah. Um, excuse me, would have been two thousand and eleven. I think I did super stock. I started this season on a Ducati and then moved on to a, to a Honda for CN Racing. CN Racing, um, yeah. great team, great people, lovely mm-hmm. people. Danny um, Buchan, uh rode for them yeah. either that year or the year before. He rode that from year. that year, but didn't yeah didn't finish did the season. Bands, yeah, so, he, yeah. so then I was because I was personal friends with Christopher and and Julia, so they asked me to to ride for them. And, and then they brought, it was a Taylor Knapp in, the American guy? Yeah, he was in the year before, when they were on the Kawasaki. So he had some good results for them. Yeah, um, yeah, good little team. Mm. Good little team. That a fantastic, probably the best looking truck in the paddock. Well, I, yeah, I for for the season after, that was the truck I was using. I rented that truck to run the Kawasaki Superbike outfit, and it had the big, one of them Scania's that look like the American truck. You know, uh, uh, come here, you fighter. <laughs> so you turn up with a presence, and then you had to back it up. Um, <laughs> God, nothing phases you, does it? Pure can't. No, because I'm. This is why the the business partner over there is. He's coming to help me with what we're doing. 
because I'm just like a bullet a gate or a bullet in a china shop. I'm like, I get an idea and right, we're doing it at all costs and we'll I worry about the shit after. We'll get on so that, poor ca- lad, that poor lad deals with the shit. Well, I hope we should interview you next. We've been, we've been business partners six months and look at Gray's already. He's only 23. Months. He's only 23, that poor You look figure. great, son. You look great. You <laughs> Sorry, look great. We'll, we'll get on to the, the, your career like mm. after you've yeah. finished sort of racing full time, but mm. just of the of the time you were racing, uh, what was the like the best result that you, that you, you had? <laughs> Um, the best result, or the best race, like the, yeah. what? Which race oh, are my, you most proud of? So the, um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's two that stand out. One was at club racing, uh, at what's it called, Pembury, racing a guy called Lee Revely, and I'd gone down there. Never yeah. seen the track on me or Lee Revely. Yeah, he's a nice guy. No, it's just these names are awesome, aren't they? Yeah. Are wearing main spot. And he'd, uh, yeah, he, he had an Aprilia, and, he, and to be fair, he'd been racing for quite a number of years, but he was having grudges against the, like the Pensava. There was a couple of riders there, Phil Bevan, and they were on a proper X Factory World Superbike Ducatis in the Sender Thunder Championship. You know, it, they had a, a massive advantage, so they, they'd kind of clear off, unless it was raining when we'd, we'd, we'd be at smashing. Um, literally. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and that was, we had a, a right ding dong because the, the New Era Super Cup was on somewhere else. So the kind of the bigger names had gone up there, the, the championship leaders to, to do that. And me and him just had a massive ding dong. And one of them at the end of the race, so a bit similar to you and Brian McCormack when he dragged you around the TT one year. And there's a video of you going, I fucking love you, Brian. Man. I, thought, yeah, I love that. And that was kind of that thing. Now, hold on. Let me clear something up. He, cr- never dra- he never dragged me round. <laughs> he passed us and then I caught him back up later on. He didn't drag me round. Well, that's what, <laughs> yeah. I hit a nerve there. <laughs> so, let me just clear that up. <laughs> I just thought that's what he'd done because of the way he was like, Brian, I love you. Oh, no. I was like, go on, lad. But it's <laughs> but it just, it, it just emphasise how looking at how it is bike racing is, is when, it, it? when it's good it's that good it, and it's just that emotional aspect oh yeah I adore it and then the I think the first podium I got in the Superbike Cup which was at that was at Croft um, in 2006 and it was the race you remember where Leon Aslam come from nowhere and beat Carl Harris on yeah. the last corner of the last lap it mm. was pouring them with rain so so Carl Harris had about he must have had about <clears> five or six seconds and then Leon started reeling them in like about a second a lap or even more yeah and it yeah. was like will he catch him will he catch him and then on the last lap he caught me yeah the very last corner that that, that that left hand awesome race, and obviously me and Carl and, and Leon Leon and Carl were best friends and we had a, some crack about that after but I'd got I was started I was last on the grid by you go down the start finish to it you go into that turn one there's that longish right under isn't there by the time we got into the chicane there I was eighth because it was pouring down with rain and I, I just loved the wet and one of them I just excel in it um, and I <laughs> and Steve Plate was filling in for someone on one of the Rizla Suzuki's so I'd managed to finish this first lap like well inside the top 10 and we got to that chicane bit again and Steve Plate just <laughs> proper side swipe me kind of like what the can you do in there son off your pub and get back down the back where you belong <laughs> and, uh, and I come home and I think I think it was like a 15th or 16th in, in the main race and come second in the yeah second in the Superbike Cup race, but Malcolm Ashley, the team the team owner at the time, they were all slowing me down because I had uh, Chris Martin and John Kirkham in front of me, and they were nothing to do with my race. I was in the cup, and I'm thinking I've got these. I've these. He just saw me as I was going down the start finish straight. He's like, oh shit, he's having Can't it. Stop him, just slow down. So I, I backed off. Uh, so they're the two standouts. Mm-hmm. They're I the two think stands. in the Superbike Cup back then was Philip Backlund in it uh, back then. He starts no, he was in the, the Superbike Evo. Uh, yeah, he, I'm he, he, he came with, I think. Yeah, Martin Nutt was in it. Martin Nutt, yeah. Mar- yeah, yeah, yeah. Martin Nutt could pedal a bike. Mm. He, he was a he was a good good super sport rider. I beat him at Cadwell when I when I won the when I won the race. Yeah, that first race the first race at that weekend was wet and it dried out and I went to go underneath mm. and we main wearing at the top of the gooseneck and we were on wets and it was completely dry. I thought, I've got this. Lit it up. Boom, out at sea. But because it's so steep going down Mansfield, as I'm going up, the crown's dropping away and I'm thinking, you dickhead. And I landed on the floor and I'd got round up having three stitches in my elbow and crawling off to the side at track and all people are clapping me. I'm like, don't clap me, I'm a knob. <laughs> I've just thrown away a third place there because I'm a knob. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> three stitches in and then back out and and yeah, and, and got got um, and won the won the second race. Um but I wouldn't say it was it was a standout race that because it was it was almost it was a bit of a gift because there weren't so many lads in the Superbike Cup race at that time. So, yeah, the most poignant one would be the second place at the Croft. Class. I, tell, I must ask then. Like, obviously, you've got to like 
when we, when we stepped in this room <laughs> and we were talking about um, obviously the birth of your child and it was obviously a very close connection with Carl Harris. So how, how did that friendship grow then? How did you meet him? Um, <clears throat> how did we meet? I just, I literally just kind of started um, going to BSB in all four, you know, because I'd started racing. So on the weekends off, we'd, we'd go and watch BSB. And it was just one of them things that there was a bit of bit of banter because the, the people I was going down with knew a few, a few people in the paddock and then it was, do you want a night out? I can I do, I'm going out with Carl Harris. And I remember go, I watching video, video, like proper VHS videos of Carl racing. So I had something to talk about when I went out and pissed with him because we didn't really know each other. I drove down to Sheffield and we had a night out and the rest is history. We we, we just, there was just a big connection. I've got his, his, his logo tattooed on the back of my leg and oh, we were as thick as thieves. So I remember... Can you remember when he got, uh, what did he do? Who took him out? Many people. Tommy Hill uh, at Alton Park caught his front brake leave and he went into the director's cell fencing when they had the last round at Alton Park and he was laid on the floor like a turtle, knocked out. Had to carry him round all that night. He broke his ankle in 2005, the end of 2005 on the BLD bike at Brands Hatch at the last round and they'd built him a full HRC spec bike to help keel try with the championship against Greg Levere. Hmm. Um and he broke his ankle like, should we go to hospital? And it's last round, you plan put up with the parties. And they were good parties back then. <laughs> we got that pissed. We parked on the side of the Honda's hospitality on the scooter. And we've come out and I'm like, well, where's the scooter? And he's going, I don't know. I'm going, well, happy. I don't know. So these coppers walking past, like, hey, mate, someone's nicked the scooter. And he just kind of looked as like, do one of your plant pots. <laughs> and then after about half an hour looking, I remembered where we'd left it. So then we're going past these coppers on the scooter after like, we found it absolutely mortal. You won't get away with it now. It, even though in the paddock, you'd have got bollocks, you know. 100% you would just you won't, you won't get away with that sort of life now. But ah, we had some crack, me and him, that boy. Yeah. Yeah, good, re really good times. But I missed, very, I miss him, I miss him dearly. He's, his lad just got into to racing a bit now. And young Carl. And young Carl, yeah, he's he's doing all right. Yeah. In a bit too much crashing, but he's, but he's learning, isn't he? So well, he got, I, he's I met racing with Statty, doesn't he? Yeah, I met him at Capital Park, actually, uh, mm. just a, a few few weeks ago now. Aye. And uh, mm. just a shout out to our our young friend Statty, Hayden Statt, Sugar Cube. He uh, won the British uh, 85 Small Wheel Championship. Uh, this uh, was it last weekend. Was well, last weekend so, at uh, Hawks? I was about to say Hawks Vegas, but that's uh, a place in the Lake District. Now there's a good night out if you ever fancy that. Where's that? It's in the Lake District. It's a little put. It's a little village with four pubs in it, but the, the doors don't shut. Yeah, it's fantastic. Like a bit of me, that it does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I, 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 here's a question. Then, obviously, you know, you decided to go straight down the short circuit dream of being a BSB racer. You tick that off the box, and you know, with Carl going to the TD where he sadly lost his life, did you ever, you know, with I, Carl doing it, did you fancy having a go yourself? Or I hate being one of them people that never got the balls to do it and say, "Oh, I'd love to have done it," but I genuinely would have done. Um, Milky came over in 2008 when we had the Tenor for Men team to Alton and talked to us in some depth about it and we were like well if this team's running next year then it's, it's a possibility and I just never got the right opportunity with the right team at the right time if I was going there I'd want everything to be right and, mm. and as you well know if everything ain't right you ain't going around that track so I would love to have done but I don't want to be one of them pussies that didn't do it oh, I'd love to but I, I genuinely would have done. I did contem contemplate thinking after Carl passed away to go and do it in 15 just to finish the Superstop race in, in his honour and I would have finished dead last and wouldn't have cared I'd have wobbled round I'd have walked round but it just things didn't pan out so no it was some, and then I got too old because you can't do it after 40 now as a newcomer can you that's I what think, I say when, when that was introduced two years ago three years I, I can't mind yeah it two or three years ago two or three yeah, years yeah, yeah, yeah. ago I yeah. brought in so, now, do you agree with that or not I think for me personally it was it was like a bit of a gift because it was well I can't now so stop dreaming about it. Stop thinking about it because you you've not raced for a bit for a while now. You smashed the bits. You, you know, just the, if your dream's gone, if it's been taken away, you can't you can't lull on it, can you? So it was. So yeah, I think I do. I, th I I've got it. You know, I think this should be a minimum age limit, and I think this should be. You know, if once you, if you've not done it by the time you're forty, then. Why, why are you trying to bother? Go and do the Manx and what, what, go around the 600. Yeah, I I, I personally totally agree with that. I, we talked about it on the pod ages ago, Chrissy. I can't remember your, like, what was your thing on the same the pass? The Max Age thing. Yeah, the Max Age. Uh, I haven't really thought about it, to be honest, but I've, um, 
Yeah, I guess I, I can see the logic in the mm. in the forty year old thing. So because yeah. it's it's supposed to take three years to learn, isn't it? So then you're forty three, and then you're gonna I have a crack. I, I don't think I don't think it's like that. Like you say, it, I think it. Like you say, you can't put an age on these things. But I feel like if you're gonna go there, you, you can't just wait to leave it as a bucket list. <laughs> Yeah, situation. You know what I mean. If you want to do it, you should be in your prime, like you see, yeah. rather than just. And I think on. it's yeah. it's become that professional now, and I know a lot of people don't like the way the TT is going, but I think there's a, I think they found a really good balance. Me, where you, you know, if you want to go on your bike and you're all black leathers and stuff, and to sit in a corner and drink beer and chat bubbles, happy days. But it, it needs the other side of it to come in for its for its own survival. And if someone wants to pay a thousand pound to sit in hospitality. What does it matter to the guy that's there in his black leathers that's been coming for 50 years smoking his pipe? It, I just, they can both work. Yeah. And as long as they don't take away the accessibility from the TT, yeah. where the like riders are walking in the paddock and you can be grabbed, you know, a bit like PSB. If they keep that integral part of what the TT is, I don't see the problem with it being a little bit more up to date. I was very, when they brought in the TV thing, I was actually personally against it. Because I loved the old way of the radios and it going around the circuit and you'd sit there watching the timing screen. And there was just something about it. if you wasn't there, that's how you'd listen to because that's all you'd ever listen mm. to watch the TT. But then when it, after day two or three, when Dave O. Johnson had stopped me in the dick and, and got his act together. <laughs> that was a wink. Dave out, Dave out. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was a <laughs> but they ended up doing a really good job, I think. I um, think Dave did that. We, we've said that smashing. loads on the pods. I think he did an outstanding job at that. I think that's... Personally, I think you should give me his OMG ride. You know, like, <laughs> park it up, son, and just go into full-time commentary, I think. Mm. That's a hint. That's a proper hint, yeah. that one. But, um... Aye. Yeah. And, obviously, uh, last weekend, the it was the last round of the the, the tr normal championship before mm. we go down into the in the showdown. And, um, so, obviously, the, the showdown used to be top six. It's now top eight. Extended a few years ago. Of the people that didn't make the cut, who were you most surprised to see not in the showdown? It's a bit hard to say because I think that the, some the, big, big names not in the showdown. This well, year. you're obviously going to think of the likes of Josh, aren't you? You know, instantly. It's so, the first time that Birdie's team's not made it. So Jesus, I. Jo there's Josh Brooks, did, Tom Sykes. Did Tom Sykes get knocked off again? Or did, oh, did he fall off or get knocked off? Did he get knocked off? Did he fall off? He had a fall no. off and get a knock off. Oh, yeah. I, I can't. Oh, but they've they've struggled ever so much with those bikes, and to, for for whatever reason, there's no. It's not no point us going in, 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 into the reasons. But I tell you what, Bri Bridewell on the other side of that, on the other Ducati, he's like it, it's all over social media. I'm going for the triple at Alton Park. They, what have they changed? Well, they've got they, the they, new. Some, they've some, got the new swing arm, haven't they? Um, what in the Ducati? In in the Ducati, yeah. Oh, all right. Um, it, is in, it is interesting how the Ducatis went from a few years ago. You'd have both the PVM bikes and the Oxford product bike. They, they were almost classed as the best three bikes on the grid. They were almost trying to get banned. All, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, like at one were, point, they were. It, the yeah. the season that uh, Scott Redden won. The nearly every race that year was won by a Ducati. It was like a massive percentage. Yeah, because uh, obviously Scott off, and Josh were both w winning on on it. Um, where these days, it's I mean the last uh, the last time Pete, Chris, I think Christian got one or two wins on it. And if <laughs> Josh hasn't won, been on the podium for for a long time now, they seem to have massively lost something. But it's to be fair, PBM bikes have taken a big notch down but even uh, Tommy Bridewell hasn't been as competitive this year as what he has been in the past well, yeah it's, they're I don't... always chasing each other aren't they and it is weird how can you the most dominant display in the in the dry that I've ever seen in BSB was at Alton Park when Tommy Bridewell just cleared off. Oh, when he knocked it off last year. Yeah, he looked it looked like he was in a different league to everyone else, oh. and it's 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 mad to think that. I mean, we've been to Alton a few oh. times since then and prior to then, and I don't know if it was if it was the way he woke up that morning or if it's a setting on the bike or whatever, mm. but. It just goes to show that when they do get that bike right, it is a will be. Yeah, he, yeah, it's, um... he, he must have lost sleep over that. How we could not replicate, like, no, I'm not having a go at him, but it's like that one moment of out of body experience riding, and it, it should have been replicated, 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 replicated. But my God, if that happened to me, I would love that to happen to me, by the way, <laughs> just putting that out there. But for that to go. Did... Oh, the amazing. other big riders, the other big names, not to make the showdown this year. Obviously, Hickman for the first time ever, I think, since the showdown was Shit, in, invented, yeah. and it's uh, not one BMW in the top eight. Uh, Buchan, 
as well. Andy, mm-hmm. Andy Ewan, uh, Leon oh, Haslam. They had a shit weekend. God love yeah. them. Uh, there's some big, big names. I mean, <clears throat> going into the season, obviously it's on record because it's a podcast and it's recorded. I fancied, <laughs> I fancied Leon Haslam for the championship this year. And uh, from to not make the showdown is it just goes to show. I, I, I class myself as maybe not an expert in BSB, but I would like to think I know me eggs. Yeah. And it just goes to show how how detached well maybe not how much i don't know but just how unpredictable it is i guess is a better way of saying it because obviously we know leon is capable of winning the championship but for whatever reason they just haven't managed to get the best yeah and i i haven't had much time to speak to leon about the the issues with with the bike because that i mean don't forget that team not so long since finished second in the championship Mm. obviously not the same bike because the bike's slightly slightly newer now so so liardi knows how to run a team that can finish up there and Leon obviously knows how to win races, so something's just not gelled. And when I was watching from trackside at Snetterton, he was he looked like he was really struggling with whatever the problem is, which looked to me like he couldn't get it stopped for whatever reason. Yeah. And then he was losing his rag and gassing it and nearly eye siding and he, he could just see he was he was very happy. So if whether Leon stays there next year or not, it is obviously to be decided yet whether he moves on. But if he does, I think he'll spend a lot of winter. If they can get to where they should be. That is one team that definitely can with the right approach, you know, and, and maybe change a few things. And it is kind of coming up in silly season where everyone's chatting up, talking the rumour mills are starting. What, uh, what gossip, juicy gossip. gossip. We've, we've, <laughs> we've, we've chosen this uh, particular spot on the podcast quite wisely with the end of the season coming up because we thought you're, you'll have an inside <laughs> scoop on some, some juicy gossip. So I, don't, what, I think you've called you know? me, I think you've called me in one week too early then because Alton Park's going to be the one where people start talking but there's talk of, it was Super Sport champion Jack Kennedy doing a bit of some Thing, maybe even this season um, on an R1 yeah because he's already won the championship honey. he um, I, you told me he'd been testing somewhere and have you remembered you know, I can't remember who was telling me but he was testing in the UK mm. on a yam yeah so maybe now, he's gonna either do... he was playing on one or testing for a team mm. I don't know but it was like it, he was flying around in an R1 but it makes sense because <sighs> I've never ridden on R1 have you ridden an R1 no have you ridden an R1 yes not a new shape one yeah, I've rode, yeah. It. You don't have to say that, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a pillion. They call me the pillionator, don't they? Because it's <laughs> just of that accident. But uh, no, I've rode one of the new ones and they, and they are a good bike. How long have you done pillions at BSB, by the way? Uh, probably since about 2011. Um, and I've only had one crash and it wasn't my fault. And you always <laughs> you always do it. Like, Is it every round? <laughs> Uh, yeah, if, if if I'm there and, and if I'm asked, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of the one that... I hope you get to. loads of asks after this pod, I really do. I'll, yeah. I'll talk you through it. It was John Reynolds' fault. It weren't my fault, I'm telling you. Did, did, I thought I was a right bollock enough, Stuart Higgs. But did, did, we'll go back to that. Did <laughs> Dave will not want to roof it when he had his girlfriend on the back? Yeah, 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 yeah showing off. So that was he then... A wheelie hold on, hold on, it, it, he had but, no back brake. <laughs> roofed it. But, but oh, no, 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 that, that was how we made where he's smart. I think he roofed one and snapped the frame in half. Never. Dave o was it? No, I'm sure it was Knockhill. Yeah, uh, sure, with his nice. missus on the bat. So yeah. that after that, it was like, well, you're not. Is that the one he missus. married? No, 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 no. Oh, oh all Dave o. Is um <laughs> no, no, Dominic, no, no, not the one he married. <laughs> 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 would would your missus go on the back of you? <laughs> Absolutely not. Really? My missus is far too intelligent and classy to be going on the back of me. Uh-huh. I've got to say, you've um you. How can I say this politely? I'm You're batting. Doing, doing very well for yourself. She's yes. a grandin, isn't she? Yeah, I don't know. I do not know what she's doing. Have you seen mine? No, I'd love to, though. She's, she's a grandin. <laughs> Jesus, Webb. She's a grandin. Take your hands out your pockets, Dominic. Right. Anyway. Nah. So, <laughs> no way. <laughs> I'm going to sleep well tonight. Her mother's going to listen to this. I, I've, I do my best to try and swear as little as possible because I have just I have got a potty mouth. Um, but I'm not so bad in interviews, but I'm trying to behave honestly, Catherine. I am. Um, there you go. So we'll yeah, talk- uh, right. So yeah, so the the people that are not in Hickey, that's very surprising. But as you know, there's something just not clicked with the BMWs. And I don't know if that's the new tire this year, the the SCX, that's making it a bit difficult for you guys. Same tires last year. Oh, is it? All yeah. oh, right, okay. Um, but then there were struggles began last year, didn't they? I suppose um, for for the BMW guys. Uh, there's something. Do you know what's missing? Can you from the BMW? It is. It's interesting how dominant or how. F- exceptional the bmw is in super stock yeah um and how it's such it's such a great package out of the crate yet in bsb and in world Superbikes, <clears throat> it's had the top 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 teams it's had top, the top top riders and it's it seems to have you know everyone's thrown the kitchen sink at it and for whatever reason they just cannot um make a consistent good suit bike and yeah. we've seen flashes of brilliance like when uh peter hickman broke the lap record at cadwell park did the double last year uh danny buchan did the same this year 
now and again it it just comes out as like it and it looks like they've made big progress same as mm. scott on uh, world suit bike sometimes looks like he's made a thing it was the mm. same when tom sykes was on the bike he'd quite often put it on pole position and it looks mm. like they've always like been close but um for whatever reason it's just kind of <laughs> i think well, one of the main reasons i think possibly they could go back to in in world super bikes um i'm pretty sure all of the main manufacturers run electronics that are not on their they're not developing their own electronics for superstock so for yeah. example the kawasaki uh, does it run the morelli yeah or whatever yeah, yeah, it is. yeah i think bmw so, run them their own roofs haven't they where bmw stick with bosch which is right yeah potentially why their superstock electronics are absolutely amazing because they're developing them all the time in world superbikes and then transferring that down into the road bike where the likes of the krt team are working on on electronics packages that bear no resemblance to the to the bike that's to, on the yeah, road the the and road. so therefore that could possibly but is it elect? I mean, that wouldn't make any difference in BSB anyway. So Scott I'm, I'm... seems to have found something with the Calix swinging arm, which everyone's barking on about. I know, but it but it has to be said because because his results have got better with it massively. I mean, a lot. And a did lot you of, did uh, you see his bike at Donington? Did you go to World Superbikes at Donington? I didn't. Know. I managed to get it in the pits down there. Um, Sean Muir's garage. Oh, I was nursing the chubby for a while after going in there, and I'll tell you, Oosh. the bracing that they've put on that frame and stuff. Have you seen where they braced them on the so the BMW frame goes like that, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. They've got a massive brace in there and then the bracing inside and stuff. And it was it was as close to a motor GP bike as you would see, which I'm sure a lot of the world super I haven't been into the Kawasaki yes, so I can't yeah. say about them, but I was just like this Impressed. is unbelievable. Yeah. So they, it's what I'm you're saying that BMW throwing the kitchen sink at it. They absolutely are because there's nearly no stone unturned. The things they've got on that bike within power, the rules. Power wise, I'm talking BSB and mm -hmm. World Suit bikes. Power wise, it seems to be you know bang on. It's obviously suspension wise, it's anyone's choice. Every, everything seems sort of in place, but for yeah, for, for whatever reason, they don't seem to be able to cut it at the at the top level. What's okay? Um, let's let's pick a track. Um, let's let's talk Snetterden. It's the most recent one. What was Brad Ray doing? He was the fastest Yamaha lap times for uh, for sixes, I think. Something yeah, like something like sixes. that. Sixes. So and Hickey what, wasn't that, a million sevens. miles off at Snet, was he? So, Which then that 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 sorry that just knackered my. I thought right because of Cadwell, the, the temperature was slightly down, and, and Danny Buchan did really well, and Hickey did well there. And then we got to Snet, and then Hickey still did well, and the temperature was up. So I was thinking, all oh, right, well maybe the BMW is going to excel in slightly colder conditions because hmm. you had a good run at the beginning of the year, didn't you? When when track temperature slightly down, so I thought, ah, maybe this is like a, a temperature issue with, with the way the tyres are running. But then, then Hickey doesn't get a second place at Snet, and only balls as that theory right up. <laughs> now that you brought that up, let's talk about that uh, the safety car situation. Mm. Mm. My giddy aunt, that was there. Uh, I tell you what, I'll, was, I'll see if I can get saucy, it up on, on my phone. Yeah, oh, bloody saucy. What's your, both your takes on it? I, I tell you what, before, before, before we go down that route, um, I, I think I'm going to overcomplicate this, but what's mad is what makes a race winning bike is it the easiness to ride it. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you look at the lap times, was it a 36 the lap speed there? Sorry, Snedden. Was yeah. it 136? 40, 46. 46. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, 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 four, yeah, yeah. Like a 46. And if Hickman's doing 46, 47, mm. he's in the 46s. So for the average put no, for the average punter looking at that on a screen and they're all within a tenth, within the like the top ten. It's a mate like the engineering of it, how what makes that bike consistently do thirty sixes to a one lap wonder? It, that I is think, gonna be a question probably no one can ever answer. But Well, I think the four Yamahas, I'm not saying they are by any stretch, but certainly look the easiest bike to ride. But out of them all, Hickey looks like he's working. You look like you're working. You know, the Hondas, mm. they're absolutely grafting their nuts off it on them things. Well, Glenn, say, but I mean, like, for example, the first round, Glenn went out and did the triple. And it, every, at Silverstone. At Silverstone, at Silverstone yeah. And everyone yeah. would look and think, wow, either like Glenn's the best rider. Or, or, and then that hasn't been repeated at all around the season. Uh, like, say, Danny, Danny World Beater at Cadwell. Then you've got, it's, <laughs> I personally believe that every manufacturer out there is good enough to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, the Yamaha is the best package. Yeah. Out like <clears throat> as it uh, within the rules, I think it's maybe. Uh, yeah, I think it's just the best. And a good case to look at that is if you look at where Bradley Ray and Kyle Ride were with the same team, 
they had was it two years on the BMW? Yeah. And they were and like struggled. sort of about yeah. eighth to twelfth. And then they've both got on the Yamahas and the, in the first season Bradley Ray's dominate uh, uh, leading the championship and very dominant. And Kyle's also in the showdown and what is he, about fourth in the championship or fifth? Yeah. So it's the power however, I do think if you got um say like if Elon Musk and like three of his top people set up a British superbike team, I think you could give them any manufacturer to start with and the, clev- the cleverest t- uh, people in the world would could win on any of them bikes. Well, yeah, I mean, no, when... Go on, Dominic. Sorry. No, I'm just, I mean, like, they are, like, when you look at the history of the three riders now, I don't know what Jason O'Hallam was like on a super sport, but Kyle Ride, you know, Brad Ray mm. and then um, Mackenzie, outstanding super sport riders are they reinventing the wheel and what i mean by that is you know the whole pointing it down the middle stopping it picking it up and driving are well, the, they, the are, Yamaha. They, are they trying to change the style and a, are the ducati's trying to follow suit are they trying to ride those big bikes like follow the leader element this is just a mad theory based on no evidence whatsoever but are they trying to ride ducati's no longer like big bikes but more like super sports and it's just you, not working. They could. I mean, they could be. I mean, take Top Rack out the equation. Your, your Yamaha riders normally excel if they've been a super sport rider because that's the way that the, the Yamaha superbikes run. You break a bit early, you run a load of corner speed through and, and, and get on the gas. So, uh, But then you go to the V4 things where um, an inline four tends to not really want to turn in, but once it's in, it holds a line really well. And that's where you get your corner speed. And a V4 tips in really early and then just doesn't want to hold the line so i can't imagine ducati trying to reinvent the wheel that way um no, but it, just... I, bet, I mean to, to be fair in motor gp they seem to offend something but there's a lot more scope to change things within the rules mm. in that so yeah. but yeah i think i think next year you're going to see resurgence from birdie i'm pretty sure both riders are going because i've heard sykes is going back to worlds i think josh has just lost his ride um i know he's been talking to to a couple of people because birdie ain't going out on a whimper after he did the podcast with you guys and said, you know, nothing lasts forever, blah, blah. Everyone's going, oh, he's going to be out this year. Paul Bird's ego will not let him pull out end of this year. Which is after, good. You know, yeah, it's great. Which is great, isn't it? So he needs to, you know, put, get some development work on the bikes, get some 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 brass spent and, and, and get right back up there. Who, so, who would you like to see on the Ducati? For next year? Yeah. Um, well, here's, yeah, I tell you, I think would go very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want on the pod again, say uh, it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> say it out loud. No, I can't do it. Do you like Danny Kent? <laughs> um, no, I think Danny Kent would be a fair shape. I think that Birdie should have a. Re- I think Birdie should have a real talk with him because of where he's come from. In in more, you know, he's a Moto Three World Champion. Can Danny? Danny seems to be doing a very good job. I think personally, at Bill Base. I don't think results have gone his way, and he's had a bit of bad luck. But I, I think don't... Danny. Danny's got. Something still to just, offer. Just playing devil's advocate on that one. You've got Christian Eden and Danny on both on the same mm. bike, mm. and out of the, I don't, what have I had so far? Maybe twenty odd races. Christian's beaten them in every race so yeah. far. Why? Why would? Is, they, why would you put? Is he on the same package? Is he getting the same sort of support? Are Bill Base putting all their eggs into Christian, which they should rightly be doing? This is me just speculating. Oh, no, no, I'm no, not. No, I no. don't know any of this, but. I would say that if I'd have just hired Christian Eden from Paul Bird's team, who'd been winning races at the Ducati, I would be focusing on Christian right now and then bringing Danny through. But if Danny doesn't stay there next year, where does he go? Because I think he's earned the right to stay in superbikes. I, I, I believe that. And yeah. I think there's a lot more to come from Danny. Yeah. It just needs someone to unlock it. And I believe, I just so, think that because of the way Birdie's team's run, so mm-hmm. it's so professional and so more GPS, I think that they'd be the people that would take Danny. I think there's no bad teams in, in Superbike. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no bad riders. But sometimes you just get the wrong mix. So if you were if you were Paul Bird, you'd put Danny Kent and... You'd be worth a shout, wouldn't you? Like, you, like seriously, that's trying to if, blow... Not because so I'm here, you, but... So if you were... If you were but will Leon hasn't been going there? I was going to say, if you were Paul Bird and you, you... Let's say you went down that. Do you seriously... To me, like you said, he wants to go out on a win, and start winning again. You're looking at, you've got to be looking at the the best riders in the championship mm. to to have a have a go at that. And yeah. I would, yeah. Leon I mean, can ride a V4. He's, he's not going to be the take, Aprilia, so. it, For example, I would say myself mm. and Danny would be a, not a safe bet. It would be a it, at best, it would be giving them a chance and let's see how they're going to do. Mm. 
at Paul's stage in his career, he's won at least one rider that you can put good money on. They will definitely be on the podium. Yeah. When Jakey Byrne <clears throat> used to ride for him, you could bet your bottom dollar that he's going to be front row of the grade, probably pole position, and he's going to get you at least one win on the weekend, pro- yeah. maybe two and possibly three. There's there's not many riders in the championship, but for me, if, if to, so to answer my own question, um, I think I'd be looking at Bradley Ray, and I think Skinner's probably going to be going to uh, Moto Two, but if not, I'll be look at Skinner. I tell you what, I hope I hope Skinner gets that right. I really do. Now let's talk in theory, right? He moves up. That that's a rider FS three. So the thing about for me looking at the superbike class for next year is who would you look to promote? I think Charlie Nesbitt deserves a shot in superbikes. Yeah, absolutely. He's, 100%. he's, he's found something, hasn't he? After struggling for some of the season, mm. um, yeah, he's he's found something and found a click with a big bike because yeah. he's been a regular small smaller mm. class rider, hasn't he? Who, who yeah. else? Who else would you promote? For me, there's the thing about I was actually speaking to Christian about this the other day. The you've kind of got your benchmark in super sport and in super stock and you kind of you know roughly where when jack kennedy goes up to Superbike, you sort of know roughly where he's going to fit in and in super stock you've got like say alex olsen and billy mcconnell and you kind of know where they're going to fit in so you're kind of waiting for someone to come up and either start beating jack or start beating billy and consistently mm. to be to think right let's give them thinking, a go on yeah. the super. and is there anybody that's coming up that's you is consistently. I mean, nobody's got anywhere near Jack Kennedy. Well, Jack, like, Jack, no, close. no. I think so. Next year in, in Super Sport, for instance, I think Bradley Peer is going to be the, the kid to beat. I think he's going to be well in there. Um, mm. And then jumping straight back to the Superbike question, and, and Christian Eden, what are Build Base going to do next year? Are they going to be on Suzuki's now? Suzuki have completely stopped doing any kind of uh, of racing style stuff. So, mm. do they spend one more year Hold on, and use really? the backup that they've got? Yeah, well, they've pulled out a MotoGP World Endurance. Um, right. So, unless Suzuki UK, I'm not sure what the format is and how, and how they get their budget or, or bikes or whatever, but if they decide, right, we've, our racing programme has stopped, what's the point in build based staying with them? Do they get a new manufacturer in or, you know... Well, they went from BMW to if Suzuki, you were, didn't they? Yeah, so Kawasaki if you were, build, if you were uh, build base, which manufacturer would you want to go to? Be the yam, well, right? I think you'd want the yam, but I, I just think the Hickens would be like, right, well, there's, you know, there's a potential of five of them on the grid next year, so what support are we going to get, if any? Are there going to be bikes available? So then you'd, you know, would he look at the BMWs again? And I, I don't I, know. It's, it's look really, at, really can just, hard. Can I just say, right. if, like, if you're considering going to BMW, you've got Synetic, which are extremely well funded and two fantastic riders, and you've got FHO two very good riders and uh, very well one funded. Very, very and well. Not, and not one of them, and the um, none of them have been in the top eight. So why yeah. why, why would you go there? How many cars are you in I mean, shoot. Yeah, but, you know, was, that's what I'm... But, what, but who, are, who are they going to choose? That's no, that's the thing. A lot of people looking at Honda. Honda. But then again... Honda uh, on pulling up the curbs. You've, yeah, you've got... <laughs> that, that'll come. <sighs> That'll come. You reckon? Uh, that will come. I, I, I thought it would have come a little bit sooner, but you've got to remember who built you know, that bike was developed by HRC. They just, they've got a fight. I'm telling you, trust me. Oh, but you see, Honda. So you're saying oh, you'd no, go on. Honda? I'd, oh, I'd abs- yeah, I'd, I'd absolutely go on, personally, because it's what I've rode and had my best results on, so I might be a little bit biased, but no, I think that the Honda's got a lot of potential, but they've just got to work out the stock how to bike. use all this power. Yeah. That that bike generates, and you can keep dialing it out and out and out, and then you lose that advantage. So, to you know, they need to find something with that for that straight line speed they've got out to get it through a turn. If you, well, but, if you for the roads, if somebody, yeah. if you like a massive sponsor came to you and said, Dom, I want to see you do really well next year in in uh, the senior TT and the super stock super bike race. You can have any manufacturer, and I'll pay anybody to build it for you. Which manufacturer would you go? For the t- Isle of Man with my head overruling my heart, yeah, my heart would say Ducati just because yeah. I want to do it. But me, me head at the moment because we're like sheep in this game, it's going to be the Fireblade Cup for the road. You saw Honda as well, no, because like you know the stock class, it, it is turned into Olsen's the only one in the BMWs like flying those colours. Mm. Yeah. He's in Honda sandwiches all the time, and even he's deflated which, on the grid, going, oh, "I'm in, a, I'm, in yeah. a I'm in the Honda Cup here, I'm in the Honda Cup." Which, are, loads which, of people which are the top riders in Super Stock are on BMWs this year? Billy mm. McConnell. He's got on a Honda. Honda. In stock? Yeah. Billy McConnell? Yeah. He's on a Honda. 
Let's have just said he's oh, on a Honda. He is on a Honda. Oh, sorry, not yeah. on a Honda. Sorry, yeah, he's on a BMW. Oh, I'm glad you picked up. Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm glad there's two of us yeah. here. They yeah, I'm saying, not, so not other than Honda. Alex, who, who, which other top riders are there on a BMW this year? In stocks, no, it, it's doing that circle thing, isn't it? I remember being still on the, I th- I on the wall at Knock Hill. As good as anything, to be fair. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, the bikes are mint, you know, don't get me wrong, but like you say, it's like, but Jesus, the only person that was taken out of that proportion in stock thousand was a bike that you probably wouldn't go buy a stock thousand for anyway. It was Tim Neve on the Yam. Mm. Yeah, but doing yeah, very no, well. But, yeah, but yeah, in the yeah. same breath, people weren't going, oh, I'll go buy a Yamaha now in stock. They weren't. The, the team was like, you know, and Tim can pedal a bike, my God, and he's still in the top five all the time with a smash bell of this. But, <laughs> yeah. no, no, but you wouldn't go. But, like, um, there's Jamie Coward. He's been bought two Fireblades. Um, Craig Neve, he's gone a second quick around Cadwell. You know, he's come off a very confident Manx Grand Prix and he's feeling good. And But as far as the stock class is concerned, and we're talking about electronics, is the electronic package good for that? And it just everyone seems to be the Fireblade Cup. Yeah. Yeah, I but, mean, it wasn't long ago that it was the Kawasaki Cup. And then know, it, it turned into the BMW yeah, Cup, and, and then, then it turned yeah, into so that. Turned, gets, yeah, it's a I, cycle, isn't it? Yeah. I call it the iPhone class, because it qu- upgrades quicker <laughs> than the fucking iPhones, doesn't it? You know what I mean? It, it is so, isn't it? You know what I mean? I've just bought the iPhone 12. The iPhone 13's out now. Well, what the fuck? Going back to uh, the Snetterden incident. So, for anyone that didn't see in race three, Storm Stacey uh, blew up, I think, on the straight. Safety car came out. He and did well the safety, that, because it locks <clears> it. Locks it. <clears> safety <throat> car came. But this... Well, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to talk over this as well. But McKenzie then restarted after the safety car, and unbeknown to them, there was a penalty coming. He, Ray, and Owen. Also. So <laughs> let's, go, let's go to a first take. First take was uh, how, how um, Duncan in comms uh, read it on the screen. He thought that the first two riders, um, Brad and Taz, had been given two long lap penalties because it was rider 128 two long lap penalties he didn't realise Glenn had got it so he was t- saying all the way through uh, that Glenn had won the race then but Glenn had obviously got the thing my first take on it is I absolutely agree with Glenn <clears throat> I know the rule is rule I agree with the ruling that that's what it is but as Glenn said if someone goes you can't hold back nah. because what happens if that man behind you is going so yeah. knowing, knowing Stuart Higgs and the BSB um, the management I think that that rule will be slightly changed now what they will do, I don't know. Whether they're going to... Go on, sorry, Chris. I'm just going to say, for people yeah. that uh, haven't seen it and don't understand mm. what happened, so basically, the safety car um, is out. The rule is you can't overtake the safety car, obviously, mm. and you've got to stay in order until the next time you go. So once the safety car turns its lights off, pulls into the pits, mm. when everyone goes past the start finish straight, that's race uh, under normal conditions yeah. again. Um, what happened is, as the safety car was coming into the pits, the first three riders actually overtook it before. So, like, it had pulled off to the side, but before it was fully off the track, through the top three uh, overtook it. So, them three all all got uh, the equivalent of long lap penalties. Mm. And what that meant was that the first and second actually uh, sort of made up the time so they stayed first and second mm. however Glenn Owen who finished third on track mm. and thought he got a podium uh, didn't actually get it far enough away from Peter yeah. Hickman Hickman then uh, so the only actual change in position was the third place so Glenn was sort of stitched about it mm. and um, well Hickey got second and Taz got third so that I didn't was, know that yeah, so Hick- it was Brad Hickey Taz yeah because right, I okay, said yeah, but, I, I yeah. love Vicky me, but he could he come into pits after I, I was in FHO's thing. He's got a face like a robber's dog, and he bless him. But he can still get a bird. Um, and he wasn't sure where we got second place. Face like a what? A robber's dog. <laughs> and he, and he might be fast. That's right. I, I didn't know if he was still doing that scales thing. I thought I don't want him beating me at that as well. He just I've oh, got that around the corner. No, I don't bother because if I lose at that, I'll be really pissed off. One of the first times I ever rode is an extender in Cadwell Park. He comes steaming past me when I'd only just had it five minutes. And got on the tail for him for about three laps and then splattered it, um, trying to keep up with him. But I knew then that he, he was going places and, and, yeah. and where he's gone. But yeah, so yeah, no, Hickey actually got a second place. Right. Uh, um, d- do you have an opinion on what happened? I've got quite a strong opinion on that, that's all. But all right. you... You're building up, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's so difficult, isn't it? It is difficult. I think the thing is that the, the car definitely moved out of the way. Arguably, it was off the racing line. That It was a clean line of sight when the car stepped out off. Now, I can understand, McKen- totally understand Mackenzie's going. You, you've come through that turn. That corner is so sh- shallow, even mm. regardless of that. He saw it. He didn't judge, judge it quite right. Mm. Opened it up. But if he rolled the throttle, 
there. Uh, well, it, to it be fair, been, it would it, there would have been someone dead. Taz is the one that's controlling the race until they cross the start finish line. So it, you know, so that's why the other two had to go because when Taz went, they've got to go with him. The, you've so no was Taz choice. in the wrong one. Well, he was. He just missed. He mistimed it and misjudged it. That's all. But yeah. Taz could have rolled up to the start finish line at two mile an hour, and everyone could have stayed behind him. Has anyone ever after. done that? Leon Cameo. Leon Cameo did it one one time. Kind of being left uh, it and stuff. Yeah, like that. properly slowly and then bang. And, I'll see if I can find, find that YouTube just, actually because it's quite. Uh, but what, yeah. but, so I mean, yeah, it was, it was an error of judgment. Um, no harm was done. Done, thank God. I think the rules will be slightly modified. Um, yeah, on the way they... down, I was actually thinking about it. I thought, well, what do you do? Do you say that the, the rider's behind to make sure that this doesn't happen, actually cause an accident in the future? Do you say, right, the lead rider controls the race, but he must stay 150 metres behind the, the car? Roughly. You're never going to be able to get it exact, but... Should, like, should, should, it, should, it, ta should it have only been Taz that got penalised in that view? Because Glenn, like, well, we, yes. were we were talking about like, like Glenn had to. Ride I think them. so, yes, but the rules don't dictate that at the, at the moment. So the yes. rules were followed, and, and like Stuart it says, it's a matter of fact. So there's, which whether, is understandable. You know, it, you might sit there and go, it was it was harsh for the other two, which it definitely was. But the rules written at that time are a matter of fact. So that's there's so, no really there's no getting away from that. Yeah, so uh, so my take on it is the the, the rules are where the problem. At BSB followed the followed the rules by the letter of the law, but the the rules absolutely need changing. Uh, someone could have got mm. killed at the weekend if they if they'd followed the rule. If Glenn had followed the rule, somebody probably would have got killed. Yeah. Um. It's uh, the wrong decision for P two and P three in that case. The the lead rider is the the person at fault. They should have had a penalty, and everyone behind them. It's um. Mm. It's 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 absolutely not right. The in terms of like the mistake of the lead rider, people think it might be really easy to stay behind the safety car. It's a slight lack of um. It's a slight mistake. However, in in like say my lifetime, I've been racing BSB for years. I've been under safety car. I've led under a safety car like maybe once or twice. It's very it's it's not something you get much practice with. So it's by judging. It's not often that you're on a super bike, but behind a car and judging speed differences. Yeah. Now, in in hindsight, Taz should have just given them a bit more room, and it they would never have a problem. Um, I, but I I think the BSB got it by following the rules. I think they got it wrong, and um, I feel really sorry yeah. for Glenn. Well, they they kind of didn't get it wrong, did they? They they issued a penalty after the race, so it wasn't like. Now, the problem is now, now because people know, that's why the, the rule has to be amended because it could now co potentially cause an accident. Do you know what I mean? You learn from mistakes. BSB, you learn from you? mistakes. So BSB have never had that situation before. Mm. No one got injured because everybody just thought, well, we go for it. Simple as. But now that's been put in people's mind. Have I got to hold back? Has he just done that? And then fourth place doesn't see that they they're not gone bang. So I think it will be amended. In you know, and I think they quit always quick to do things like that. In all fairness, I wonder. You I know wonder, what I mean? I wonder if the safety car went home. Driver went home that night. And went. Maybe I shouldn't have put the brakes on. <laughs> did he slow down too much? I'm not blaming the safety car man. He is the safety car man. But or, or he... did he have a good bet on who was coming on fourth to win the race? <laughs> yeah, get some of this shit, plant pot. <laughs> he's, on, he's on bet live. Right? I go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll make this work. We'll make this work, right? Get the twenty quid in there. <laughs> sorry, Chris, you're being serious, sir. Right? Oh, oh, sorry. Good. Um, so yeah, I was going to say it, it's. I think B BSB are good at that type of thing. However, everything is left for the um, the judge the judge people to make. Yeah, and, they, and in my opinion, they should have used the judgment there. And um, yeah, but they can't. That that's the problem because it's like the timekeeper's word is law. It's a matter of fact. So it happened. It's been sent. They can't. It's not one of them judgments where they can go. Well, actually, we can act on the side of discretion here. It's an abs It's just a matter of fact that it did happen, so they have to incur the penalty. It's it's like Guy Martin at, at, at getting the time penalty at what's it and barking on at, at TT by the smallest of margin. But it's a matter of fact, so it can't. The rule can't be. It can't be given discretion. Unfortunately, I I I, I totally agree with that. Solely <clears> because <throat> it, like especially in motorcycle racing, racing in general, give an inch, give a mile. Exactly. Yeah. If you can yeah. go for the tolerance, what is every team going to yeah. go for? Yeah. I don't oh, even right. think. You, no, no, you know what yeah. I mean. You think, well, if that happens, yeah. now we've got that little bit of saving grace. Okay. Let's use it. You know, if we can do that little bit more through pit lane, let's do it. You know, mm -hmm. if we can do that. We can do this. Move the paint. You know, the green paint. Let's to, move it out a bit more. Everyone's going to go to that edge. To, in terms of going, which like I was going to say, do you want to black? I was going to say, I'm trying to be quiet. Black or a white one, but we've only got black ones today, so I'm afraid. So that's what you have. Oh, fat. In terms of the championship in general this year. Uh, obviously we've gone into the last three rounds 
Uh, who's your money on for the championship? Hang on. <laughs> Mega I, 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 I actually got it. given a crate of this um, through one of your rivals, the the one and only Mr. Neil. He bought, he bought me a full crate of white ones. It's a bit more respect. Mr. Who, sorry? Mr. Neil. The, he's Neil. not a rival. He's, he's, a, a, co- he's, a, he's a colleague. He's a, oh, he's a colleague. Oh, he's he a, rescued that good, well, didn't he? He's a good friend yeah. of ours. Yeah. <laughs> he was a lot more hospitable than you two miserable bastards and gave Is me it? a full crate of it, yeah, to keep me talking and talk we did. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a white one and, and I did it in two days. Two days. That's not Absolute. good. No, no, it wasn't. Good it you. wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't coming down for the day, few days after that, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was I was saying yeah we we did that podcast and we went across to the pub after and he's a brain brainy sod in a brain box and we uh, he's yeah, he won, he, won well. the, he won the quiz and I won eight pints and he didn't. Then again, Jen will be chuffed. No, Jen is oh she is uh, she's not hard to look at. <laughs> Amazon goddess height, you know what I mean? He is punching well above his weight. There, yeah. I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> My God, Jen, you're beautiful. <laughs> yeah, Anywho. so... <laughs> Now back back to the championship. I think it's been a very good one. Mm-hmm. It's been very open. We, we we touched on the rules and stuff before, and again, that's where they've got it right because any manufacturer on the right day can win. Even still, them that are yeah. struggling, them that are not, um, it's just them to you to develop your bikes. And and they made it very far, very fair when they, we tried the Superbike Evo, which was the precursor to how the rules are set now. Yeah. And it just meant that the guys with the massive budgets that could afford all the data men and all the logging and everything, that some of that was taken away. And it did make it fair. And you're always going to have a budget kind of dictating where teams should be. I but I think I think it's much fairer. And you can get that that odd result here and there that, you know, fucking hell he's doing well, you know. And so I think they have got it very right. And yeah. who's your money on for the championship? I think it's got to be Brad, hasn't it? He seems to be very strong at the minute. He's really clicked with that bike. Yeah, um, mentally strong um, as well, you know. He just doesn't seem faced by it all. Yeah, yeah. Happy, happy rider, fast rider, all that thing. I think. So many on Brad as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want, I want, off- I want Jason O'Halloran to win it. Solely because I want him to get that monkey off his back. Yeah, I wouldn't. You know, miss, I, uh, what rounds have we got left? Alton, Alton Donington, Donington, and Brands. I, to be honest, I can mm. see. I can see Taz dom- dominating at Donington and Brands. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Taz does win the championship again, which after the start of the season that he had would be... Well, some... he's not. Let's um, do a he's bit not of hang on a minute. Taz is not you... a massive fan of Alton Park, is he? That's so, what I'm saying. So, so after Donington. that, then he's... Yeah, but um, I mean, Bradley can pedal around Donington, can't he? I think. Uh, pedal around a bit of gambling. Should we put a bit of a, a, bit of a slide <laughs> on it? Well, I'll, I'll stick 50 pence on uh, Taz. Put it over to a quid. Go on, I'll, I'll, I'll raise Go on, you. A quid? Quid. So, I mean, I know you're like Northern Northern, but I'm proper Yorkshire Northern. No, well, like and tri- I said to Dominic, I'm tighter than Cramp of Quids on lots of brass kids. <laughs> this, is, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is BSB we're talking about here. Yeah, go see, go on, we'll have a quid. I'll, a quid. Have, uh, okay. yeah, I'll say Brad. I'll say Brad. I've got to say Brad. Did you not really have Brad? Who are you, you, have you already Jason. I'm going to put Jason. No, Jason, for, Jason for the, yeah. for the half. So, Taz, Brad, Jason. Yeah. You heard it here it's kind of like, do you know, the like film Trading Places? Have <laughs> <laughs> seen it? Oh, yeah, yeah. And they, they, they do the bet, bet for, for $1, for $1 don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we are straight on it. Straight on it. So, now, um, in terms of, so from one end of the scale, who's sort of impressed and who you fancy for the championship? We've still got three rounds to go, so anything can happen. But uh, from the beginning of the season to now, who have you been? I don't know if disappointed is the right word, but who have you been surprised at who hasn't hasn't performed Ooh, uh, nice. as well as what you expected? Now then, um, and I rate him as well a, a lot. And this is what I'm saying about there are no bad teams and no real bad riders in, in in BSB. It's just that sometimes the rider and the team are not the in in the right thing, uh, not the right match. Sorry. So I really thought at the beginning of this year that the the tag Honda team were going to do really well with Mossy. I thought there was something there. Um, obviously, this I think they struggled as much with the Honda as Luke ended up struggling with it um, to find to find a balance. Um, so now he's gone to PR. If that um, relationship continues into next year, I think that'll be one to watch for next year. I think there's a real good atmosphere within that camp. And I think that's where they, them two should have been together at the beginning of this year. As when Dan Linfoot started the year with those guys. And I don't mean this disrespectfully to anybody. I just knew it wasn't going to work. Why? I can't really say. Not because I don't want to say. I just can't, I just thought it doesn't fit to me that. It doesn't seem right. I don't know. And and and, and obviously Dan's departed ways. Mutually, mutually mm. happy. I'm not saying... You know that mm. bike was crap, or, or Dan didn't try. You know they all really tried. No, but I'm but I'm not. You know I'm not saying the reason why Dan left or Dan walked yeah, is yeah. this. It was just I never saw the team fitting for Dan. Yeah. And likewise, and I think Luke Mossy with PR, 
is a really good fit. Do, you know, just some, mm. like I say, sometimes you can have the best rider in the world mm. in a team that doesn't fit, and mm. so they you've got to move on. I'm just getting an awkward laugh because <laughs> you know by. Uh, by saying what you're not insinuating, it's just like um, like so, I'm insinuating, oh, but I, I'm not. I'm not insinuating he's a paedophile. Like nobody, nobody, nobody said, nobody thought he was a paedophile. So, what would I say? It? No, but I just say, I say, is, is I, if I had a if, listen, if I had the reason, I'd tell you straight up, yeah. just absolutely straight up, and say they didn't match because of this A, B, and C, mm -hmm. and I can't give you an answer. I just knew. And sometimes you just get a feeling about things. Yeah, so. I, I know exactly what you mean. I, I tell you what, I'm so I'm so glad he brought up the, uh, Dan Linfoot because obviously he left that team, start off a new venture in Stock Thousand, and what a race that was because Billy McConnell got knocked out by Lewis Rollo. He went in like either that was a mechanical you know, failure or what I do not third, know, but he went third time this year. Billy's been taken out, and mm. he's I mean he's just lost the champ uh, championship lead lead by the five points, isn't he? But I got three times been wiped out. Not your fault. Is very very unlucky, and um because he's you know he's worked so hard for a super stock championship every year. He's like the he he's like the you know the person you can bet he's going to be there or thereabouts well, you ruined it last time didn't you uh yeah i did yes <laughs> uh, one time. And then tom, tom beat him last year and he's yep. he's like the sort of nearly man and yeah. it's it took him a long enough. while to win the super sport championship but, but he billy, did it, though, didn't he, billy won't give him till he's won it and mm -hmm. and he's still got that Is it, he's got the cracking crack yeah. lad and yeah. Uh, yeah but the fact that he got he got mowed out and then he landed on the back of tom ward's bike tom ward took him off down the field who else did he knock out I'm not sure, but the um, Charlie Nesbitt got. Well, no, no, but that, that was. I've mean, seen the pictures of that crash. So, so no, got some. Uh, Alex Olsen um, lifted some dirt onto the track yeah. and then he folded been... the front and wiped Dan in foot out. Very, very lucky nobody was seriously injured yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. missed the air barrier. Like, I mean, lit, that Jeez. crash is once in a million. But the mad thing is, mm. people realise that <clears> if it was dirt, he would have been all right. And what I mean by that is, it's so sandy down there. That was sand. That, that whole field is just sand. It's so loamy around in Norfolk area, you know, literally just scattering marbles on the floor. If it was physical dirt, it would have been a lot heavier and it would you would probably hit bumps rather than just essentially glass. Because mm. obviously glass is made from sand. Just putting that out there. Just I am that out there. there <laughs> but no, but the fact that he missed the gap and Jesus wept, Davy Todd just, uh, he must have just saw that in the peripheral, just hit enough break. Nesbitt was in the air when he wrote, yeah, you yeah. could not rate and then his bloody teammate high sides on the rest of the side nearly Tom Ward goes high side nearly that the, the unreal race that was just absolutely phenomenal and obviously congratulations to David Todd for your first uh, uh, stock thousand win and now he's leading the championship which mm. leads into we we're talking about PR, so glad you brought that up on the Dan Linford front. <laughs> so I do apologise. I was going to say, um, obviously you mentioned Luke Mossy as somebody you surprised that hasn't done as well. Is there anybody else? Um, well, let me think. Well, just just the the, the bigger riders that that have missed out on the on the showdown. top eight on the showdown. You know, Leon. I think everyone expected Leon to do well. We all expect. Josh seemed to have found something at the end of last year, so we thought he was going to have a better start to this year and. Birdie kept him on Sykes. Eh? Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'm, if I would say disappointed so, so much in in Tom because I knew he'd never rode a V4, mm. and I thought it's a big ask to come back from Worlds after being there for so long. Yeah. Um, to then jump on something with no traction control, be a V4, and then be told you've got to ride it this way and and, and adapt. Um, which is yeah, it's a shame. I think Tom, he's doing the same times as Josh Brooks. You know, you, you know what I mean. There's not. Oh yeah, yeah, he's, all, he's no, there and thereabouts. It's mad, the, isn't it? The problem is everything's moved on, and, and yeah. it just seems like that bike hasn't for, for now. Mm. But again, we'll, we'll, we'll see next year. So I think Sykes's exit because I think he's going back to world. I think it's a bit premature. I think if Tom would have stuck with that, there, there could have been something special going on. Where, where do you think Brooks will end up? On a Yamaha. Do, this is where think, you, oh, oh, do you think he's got, going he got, back he got, to Cinetic? Do you think I think he's always mm, going to tag? Do you no. not think? No, Taz. Sorry, no. Do you not think? Me, think. Me, it could listen. It could be tag. He didn't do. He didn't do bad on there. Yamaha did he? Finished second in, in the championship. Wait, wait, he, brought, he brought Yamaha first British championship win on the Milwaukee Sean Muir boat, wasn't it? Yeah, on on on, on the, the on, new shape. On the new shape, yeah. On me. the new shape one. Yeah, so. Yeah. I would personally, I, if I was a betting man, why why wouldn't you not go sit his ass on a bloody R one? Yeah, but whose who's seat is he going to replace? You know, it's yeah, good point. Yeah, the tap. Yeah. There you go. Oh, hey, it's silly yeah. season. You've got to love it, on you? You've got to love it. You've got <laughs> yeah. to love it. I can say we're a better. We're a podcast too early for that. I think there'll be a lot more. 
going round the paddock. At, You're on next week, so I don't know why you're worried. <laughs> you know what I mean? Double episode. He's Double too episode. much of a gobshite to do it all in one. Here we go. <laughs> third horse. We're getting rid of Christian. <laughs> and you're the third horse now. As simple as that. And then, uh, God, Bennett, so where, 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 I'm trying to think what else big news on that, on the bit. Brad Ray's first triple. Jack yeah. Kennedy's mopped up on that championship. What yeah. else has happened? He was tremendous. Um, yeah. um, he's just I weighing. He. Yeah, my guy. I think the matter, if you, if you don't mind me touching on the way the whole weekend um, went on, the way that the, the the teams, the marshals, the crowd, the well, you know, the fans, the riders, everything, and and the way that it was all directed because of what what had happened with the Queen, the conduct and everything that was shown there was was outstanding. Yeah. It was done exactly right in my eyes from the way that it was all presented, that they made it low key and, and it was just done with such dignity that, because there were a lot of people at the start of it saying, you know, that it should be cancelled for the weekend, but everyone had been there on the Thursday. It would have been absolutely wrong. The amount of money spent to get there for teams, people in that were camping, the fans and stuff, and, and just the decorum and the way that everyone held themselves was, was amazing. I thought it was done brilliantly. Steve Day of Eurosport, Stuart Higgs when he was on TV, the way that Duncan and Larry on comms did it. Um, I just thought it was great. And I touched on something with, I was speaking to Steve Day, <coughs> excuse me, in the, in the paddock, uh, in the, on pit lane. And I said, if there's one sport that knows how to deal with a loss and how to react and carry on after it, unfortunately, it's us guys. Because we deal with it, we have to deal, you know, or we've dealt with it in the past. So I just thought... I just knew that it was going to be done in the right way. And, and, and come Sunday Sunday night when everyone was going on, I thought, that's a good, you know, they've done it really well and that's a nice thing. That's a nice thing for, you know, for to, for the Queen's memory that I was, at, I was at BSB, we had all the silences, we did everything right, we clapped when we should. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I agree. I've never known you've been so serious. And I'm impressed. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, I, yeah, absolutely bang on. And it's, um, it's been a, a strange time for uh, for everyone in the country, really. It's um, something, it, I mean, for 70, was it 70 years? 72 years or something? Yeah, it's the, 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 the rain. Um, it's the, yeah, longest rain in Monarch. And it's been a constant in like everyone's life. It's, that, you know, <laughs> just the Queen. And uh, it's like so... Um, integral in like everything our anthem all of our coins everything and uh, yeah it's been great to see all of the you know people go up the streets I was actually in up in Edinburgh yesterday so I just missed all of because the, the foot Edinburgh was uh, really busy the day before um all the in fact I won't say that one. <laughs> I had a joke but I better not yeah, I'll just yeah. skip that one I can promise you know at the right time <laughs> um, but yeah it's been great and then to into London and to see all of the flowers outside and stuff it's um yeah it's really beautiful and just uh yeah amazing yeah. Well, I'm glad we still got you. You're a big enough queen for all of us. Well, what, and what we did miss, you know, is, is a memorial to the queen. Someone let to, a favourite animal was horses and they let two of them on the track, didn't they, at Snetterton? Yeah, do you reckon someone let Shine. that happen? I like, well, one of them had a saddle all and one didn't, but yeah, just the Ducati Cup's going round, so you've got donkeys on track and then two horses come flying past, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I t- no, I t- oh, no, before, before we move on from that subject, did you hear about what happened in mid-Antrim? Yeah, they're a bit. Of, yeah, that got stopped, didn't it? For that, that got last, stopped. Last that literally got that got sabotaged, right? So it's a case of now <laughs> Northern Ireland. You know what I mean? Very religious country, very very religious country, and that club have had nothing but bad luck mid Antrim. And road racing is struggling as it is. And the sheer fact that the last time they were there, they were hit by the weather because it was ran in early April, mm. and it got plagues. The track got absolutely washed out, and because it's in a field, they had to get on the track. It got contaminated, and then it got cancelled from there. And they've struggled so much to get it back up on its feet. Now, God rest her soul, but Liz didn't exactly plan the day on where she was going <laughs> to depart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And unfortunately, like, like everything, it's like. It's incredibly sad, it really is. But the Mid Antrim lot have gone round at the local village, the whole of Mid Antrim, and they discussed it. They discussed all the theories, you know, very religious people. And it was going ahead. You know, they gave everyone the respect. They did everything right. They had the silences. Absolutely brilliant. They did the Friday of practice. It was the last round of the championship for the, like, uh, sorry, for the Ulster, the Ulster Championship, as well as the Super Sport. Hey, by the way, I've got to apologise. I got it wrong. I wasn't leading the, um, the Ulster Championship. They counted the second race at Armoy into the points. Adam McLean beat me <laughs> by one point. The dickhead. So anyway, <laughs> so I do apologise. I wasn't leading it, so like um, I couldn't, I couldn't attend the meeting anyway. But 
they did the Friday practice. Everyone was on the pace. It was going well, but some dickhead, I mean, like, no, 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 dickhead's not even a strong enough word for this, right? We've went out and poured glass and diesel on the track, right, to stop the race. So they woke up with the news that the whole track's been contaminated. Now, let me get this very clear. This is obviously very dangerous to the riders, but more importantly, these are public roads. Someone's gone out and poured oil and diesel. What happens if someone was coming home from a night shift? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, know, no, just... you know what I mean? Someone was going down in their push bike and someone hit a car and mowed someone. That is absolutely outright attempted murder. Mm. Someone knows the chances so, no, of catching no, the bastard. No, but you know? the, the worst thing is some ba- someone know some some like, like obviously you know very respectful of the queen you know like to the monarch and everything like that. But someone out there is bragging about it. That could it that could have killed like was you know what I mean? That when could I, have killed someone. That could have killed someone. When I heard about that, I thought it was it was obviously to stop the race. Like someone had sabotaged the track to stop the race, but I hadn't connected the the um the death of the queen. Is that? Do you feel like that? Was oh God! No, no, God! Well, you know, it's the, the you know Protestants and Catholics. You know, and you've got the so you can imagine. I just thought it was someone yeah. that didn't like road racing. I didn't no, 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 no. Yeah, like, I think no, it was no, more no, to do with no, someone being fiercely loyal and, and British. Is oh no, a hundred percent. The yeah. fact that oh, royal like royalist area, massively, and the fact of like they should have mm. cancelled it, and like, a lot of other events up like all over all over the country were cancelling events. Now. Like I say, the Mid Antrim Club have worked their asses off to get to that point, and they discuss everything. They didn't just go, "Oh, we've done this. We're, we're going to keep going." There is no way on God's green earth that they would have done that. Like, no, well, because I mean, of the death of the Queen, some, and they've decided to run. Someone has got <coughs> upset that they're not being respectful to the Queen and gone out and sabotaged the track. That is a hundred percent what's happened. But that could have they could have murdered someone. Yeah. All the guidelines were followed, not... weren't they? They were issued on, was it thir- late Thursday night or first thing Friday morning? Because I know Stuart wasn't 100% sure if you guys were going to be out, did he? And yeah. then he went, Friday practice will happen about 7.30 on, on Thursday night and we will have to do it this way and stuff. Um, so, yeah, but it's not for, for one person to decide what a whole bunch of people does, as in sabotage, you know. It's, it's yeah. just, like, like, no, no, just no, no, a talk. No, everyone's got an, opi- like, everyone's got yeah, an yeah, opinion, yeah. everyone's got their own right to... But, mm. but yeah. when you start... Messing with people's lives, then you know that's yeah, mm-hmm. that's wrong. It's properly wrong. So did they cancel, it, or cancel the rest of the? They had to. They like, yeah. literally poured glass and like diesel all over the track, and they went, "Well, we can't. Yeah. They weren't going to risk anyone's lives." I mean, but it was the almost. Thing I can't get over is the fact that someone's <coughs> gone. We're going to do. They did in the middle of the night. They woke mm-hmm. up to the the track contamination. Mm-hmm. Someone could. Have, I you think know what I mean? there, were, there were a lot of people, public that hadn't that weren't down at BSB that were just coming down for for maybe Saturday and Sunday. That hadn't set off, and then once they heard how the rest of the weekend was going to be conducted, that made their their um, their decision. And like, well, if they're going to pay such a tribute to the Queen, then we should be at racing, paying tribute to the Queen, doing the sport we love, and that's how it should have been. Not some Kim Plantpot going, "Oh, get on this." But that, like, that's the thing, isn't it? That is, they have just taken matters in their own. Uh, it's it is it's like you say, like like. Queen Elizabeth will be going, oh, I'm proud of you. So thank you very much. It's going to be mad, you know, when the next time there's a big event and we're singing the national anthem, God Save the King, it'll be like, just because it's been such a... Okay, I'm going to put something out there if the government is listening. Can we spice it up a little bit, right? I heard the Spaniards, <laughs> you know, you know, Bautista, you know, when he wins a race, yeah. have you heard the Spanish national anthem? The Italians, they got it a bit spicy. You know what I mean? Ours is a little bit, God Save now <laughs> the King. You know what I mean? It's a bit, hmm. You know, we ruled three quarters of the world at one point under some serious <laughs> reign. We, you know, we had some balls. Tyrants. We were tyrants. Hundred <laughs> percent, we were tyrants. You know what I mean? We should have some, um, you know, some, some fireworks mid-song and stuff like that. All I'm suggesting is let's change the anthem to Dunno. <laughs> I can yeah. be- look. I'm not. Mu- I'm not musical. I can barely own, barely say my own name without changing tune. So I never mind writing a song. But if there's anyone out there, that's uh, throw your suggestions. Yeah, we'll have- <laughs> Cheers to the reason. Tommy Bridewell Super Paul lap song. I've got a brand new combine harvester. At least it's Shut a laugh, up, man. Did he do yeah. that? Yeah, of course yeah, he did. Yeah. What a fella. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On his Super Paul lap. Aaron Combs doing it with Duncan. Oh, you've got a brand new car. Oh, Jesus. What God. a fella. God. What a fella. Okay, quick Good change one. of direction. Let's liven it up. Jonathan Ray, Alvo Bautista, incident of the weekend, being quite controversial. Thoughts on that? Knocked him off. Do you know what? Well, oh, yeah, I have, I have seen it. I have seen it. Um, sorry, I watched it when I got home. Um, controversial, was it? Oh, mate, it was harsh, I think, but he's racing. 
<laughs> but Alvaro Bautista is in his ass properly, and he's like, I don't care about your apology, blah, 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 blah. And so you see. What it does, it just spices that championship up. I've had harder kisses. <laughs> <laughs> Are, are you saying if you were in the championship, if you were the race control, you wouldn't give no penalty? Or do you think long lap was the correct I penalty? think long lap was enough. Yeah, right. that's that's what it's, I would say. Can we vote you in for Virtual. race control? That wasn't <laughs> so, a jump start. He gave me 20 quid. <laughs> this is Jonathan Ray making a pass on Alvaro Bautista. Yeah. So he saw it nice and early there. Yeah. I mean, once of oh, a day, once of a day, that would have been classed as a racing incident. No penalty. Don't be a plant pot again. But, he, looked, he looked like a bit of a plant, but even so we're getting the slow mo here. So he's lining him up, pulls out on the brakes. He's just so late, isn't it? And he's, he's realised, he's realised what he's done. And yeah, he's he, he knew hitting Bautista, we're going to sacrifice Bautista to save himself. So yeah, in this day and age, it, it's a long lap penalty. Like, there's no, like, but you think I'm just, not, I'm, I'm not being funny. There's no way. Like it wasn't. It, I honestly believe it wasn't intentional. Mm. That man has got too much to lose, and he, we, we've personally got. Uh, we, we met him, yeah. met him once and got him on the interview. But there's no way he has got the mannerism in him to go. I'm no, gonna, no, I'm no. going to hurt this lad. Just you know me. what I mean? He, he's got too I much. To I lose. mean, I've I've raced with Johnny, and I know how, how, how good and, and safe Johnny Johnny Name Ray God. is. He actually gave me, yeah, moving on. He gave me a tour around Silverstone once because I was struggling like mad in all six. So they wouldn't even, the team went, you're doing that shit. You aren't getting a new tyre till you do. I think it was a 124 or something like that. And Johnny Ray come past down pit lane and he went, come on, kid. And I went faster on my out lap than I'd done on a flying lap, just following Johnny. And then I come back in on, on, my, set, on my third lap and, and they give me a new tyre. Like, that's how you're supposed to do it, you knob. And I'm like, well, I just followed him, Anna. Look, he's well fast. I'm just a dick. There you go. <laughs> if you were Bautista um, and you were leading the World Superbike Championship and that happened to you, would you? Of course, yeah, you're going to feel, feel like that. You're going to feel like that. going to feel like done by Artie, of course, and he's going to want, you know, but well, it's not like that... Bautista's never took anybody out. Okay, now. Mm. You know, he can, it... he can ball a ball, can't he, that kid? Yeah. Well, the same argument, though, isn't it? It's the exact same argument. It's like if, if someone else knocked him off, would he made a song and dance about it? It's you, you know what I mean. If if someone, it's made, always going to be one of them of six or one and a half a dozen. The other. Do Scott I think Redden it was intentional? No, I, but I also think that Johnny Ray knew that he was going to hit Bautista, and it was the likelihood was that he would come out all right and Bautista wouldn't. But he couldn't. Do, there's nothing more he could have done. Mm -hmm. What what does he do? Because if he'd have just cabbed a load of front brake and tried to go to the inside, he would have took the front. He'd have still took him out. Either way, it would, Bautista was getting sacrificed, and so well Bautista tough. just has a straight line umph as well, so he has to do him in the mid corner yeah, at some so. point, nice and early break him, get in a rhythm. But that's, I mean, World Superbikes this last couple of years has, has become something worth watching again. One hundred percent. Terrible. I mean, one year I, I, Fred, when Fred was still doing comms, he invited me down for the weekend to do World Superbikes, and I did the sat there, and I messaged him on Saturday tea to him. I said, "I'm not coming back tomorrow." He went, "Why?" Because I was dog shit. It's just the most boring. There wasn't enough going on. The, the qualifying was t I was just like man I am just not bothered you can just and now I jump at the chance to do it um, you know because it, it's got real interesting again and, and because of, of, of a certain Mr Smart I, I think Scott Smart that mm -hmm. helped Scott uh, Stuart with the rules in BSB has gone over there and made the rules and made it you know more more exciting that Johnny Ray can't run away with it and the Ducatis you know every, every bike's got its strength now like the it's, same as BSB so it's yeah I think it's, it's called it's, racing now yeah 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 it's exactly racing. it's not a one horse you know I mean? race yeah it's not a one horse race yeah, definitely. 100% so, 100% are you uh, wanting to mention anything about this weekend oh um, Ron I'll tell you what wink wink nudge nudge bit of your father, father here we go <laughs> <laughs> it's a blonde Pepe Look, it's, it's a blonde looks, it looks like that <laughs> <laughs> no uh, um, no I'll tell you what before we go down that route uh, should we tidy up a couple of things in MotoGP Marquez's return Marquez's return, Aragon. Um, oh, he's not. He's not he's, here this week. Oh, sorry, sorry. It is this weekend. Tomorrow. It is. Geez. Starts tomorrow. Aragon mm. tomorrow. Um, mm. He's had some results from him there in the past, hasn't he? Marquez. He says he's got no chance. He's got a one percent, and he thinks he may even stop because of his arm. But he just wants to get out back there and do some uh, time. But if that boy goes into qualifying, and he's well, you know, he's in the top seven or eight, which he's more than capable of, even even higher in qualifying, he will go out and start that race. Whether we're finishing or not, I don't know, but. He's tied around there, isn't he? He's tied around Aragon. Mm, so I he's... think he's. It could be one of them weird returns where he'll either. I think he'll either be in the top three or he won't finish. Yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll pull in you. And uh, Peko's obviously on fire at the moment, Lace. The last four, four race 
races he's won and um yeah he's definitely got the momentum sort of catching Quattro for the championship mm. and that's kind of a lead in it uh yes he is yeah yeah, yeah. The, but it hurts Aragon as well he's, bit, he's going to struggle remember a bit of news with uh, obviously Dovi Dovi retiring it means Alicia Spargo is now the only rider that was in the championship in 2010 I think they're like Dovi and a spa if you look at a picture um, of MotoGP there's a picture well, of Dovi Dog's and, back when did Crutch Club go after that was it after yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so, the, so the, the longest sort of standing rider now is Alish by, by quite a bit <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah it's um, it's all sort of hotting up uh, news I think just today Remy Gardner who's obviously been racing the Moto uh, sorry the KTM mm-hmm. and the form the won the Moto2 championship last year he's gone World Superbikes next year mm-hmm. signed for GRT uh, so like Gerloff's team the mm-hmm. second Yamaha. Which again will have a knock on effect for the British because you know Bradley Ray may have been thinking he was off to you know could get a chance at Worlds and Taz, and that's one of those seats gone where they could potentially been been moved to. So if, if you w- were running a World Superbike Yamaha team, would you choose Taz or Brad? <sighs> Bradley. Yeah. Yeah. Pu- yeah. Yourself? Purely because of what Bradley on the on the smaller bikes, as I think is. I'm pretty sure he's done a bit. I think well, no, because Taz won won the Super Sport Championship. He pissed away with it twice. So, um, I do. It's it's an hard one. Is that? I can't even be thinking that. I think. Um, I think based on sheer. I think. I think you would set Brad through this year. I think he's shone so much. I always knew that this year was going to be hard for Taz because he, he, you know, he was nearly set to go to Worlds at the beginning of this year, and it all fell apart. Hard to then come back and think right. Well, I had my sights set on World. And now we're going to stay in British, you, you know, to keep your pecker up. And I'll tell you what, speaking of that, now, you know, when you base this whole British Championship over three rounds now, eight riders, three rounds, there you go. Now, if you're a world boss and thinking, let's sign a rider, you would probably sign Bradley Ray because of his consistency from start to this point. But then if Mackenzie, and I would, like, I would love to see it as well, perhaps if he just turns up now and does all three. <laughs> Yeah, does that there's, show, there's two that, ways does, of looking at it then no, as a, as a, as a boss like, you know, well does, look who's handled the pressure the best so what can they do well, like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, but then you look yeah. at the whole run up to that form and then the, the change but like you say there's, there's there's two sides of every coin on that side of things mm. isn't it yeah my god it yeah. would be it would be well, I don't, I don't oh, know oh. I've put, for, just pure personally I would I would take Brad but yeah he might be right that Taz might be the one that gets the, the seat to go this year if there is if there is a place move Brad across into maybe the, 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 the factory and cams team for for a season and then move on the fair, but we'll see. we'll see absolutely I think born <coughs> estimate I think just chuck him in at Worlds absolutely oh. born estimate B- born estimate 100% oh yeah <laughs> absolutely I love, I love I love Bjorn oh yeah fuck that fuck that absolutely <laughs> yeah. uh, anything can happen obviously at BSB in two back to back rounds as well it means like <laughs> someone can get taken out in one you know practice session knock, get knocked out and they miss six races it's you know quite uh, all to play for yeah. um, and also it's quite it'll be interesting to see last year for example Jason O'Halloran was so dominant through the year and then when it came to the showdown whether it was the pressure or whether it was just the, the circumstances Circumstances, but he, he his performances dropped off. Maybe this year, coming in as a bit of an underdog and just chipping away, it might give him the platform to to go for the championship. Then you've got a few outsiders like sort of Lee Jackson, Rory Skinner, Tommy Bridewell. Tommy could go and do the triple at Dalton, and all of a sudden he's right in the sh- in the. <coughs> uh, it's all to, all to play for. Um, well, Tommy did say he he's now decided that the season's won at the end of it and not the beginning so he says he's been controlling himself all year to keep himself within a in a fighting chance so he's throwing it with yeah, it, it, in some interview I heard him say that that he's he saw right, what happened he saw what happened last year and, he, and he's totally right so now it's the time to, to go for it you either go for it now or you know Alton can define whether you're going to be in with a shout when you get to Brand. so just hit the power button so yeah don't hit the kill switch Tommy the power button. Do you see? Do you know I did that? Mm. Yeah. So and then they put a piece of uh, rubber hose, didn't they, over the kill switch, and they put a tire out round it. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Fucking mm. <laughs> 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 that's What's your opinion on this BMW Cup? Uh, for next year. Yeah. Uh, there's rumours flying around the place that there's going to be eighty eighty riders. Two eighty lots, riders. Yeah, no, two lots of grids. That's the rumour. So there's going to be like two lots of like qualified. So there's going to be like an A race and a B race. Well, we'll we'll, we'll see. I'm we'll see. Sure. Oh no no! Just what's your opinion um, on that? I um, this is controversial. I don't think street fighters should be in racing series. It's for race bikes. 
thinks it road bikes that turn to race bikes, not sit up and beg cup. That Harley Davidson cup they did, it ended up being fun, but it, it just for me personally, I, I don't want to entertain it. I want a race bike to look like a race bike, which is head down, arse up, fairings on. So, it, it, but the problem is, it'll make for really good racing. It'll be really good next year, you know, and there'll be eighty riders on. But for me, I, no, no, I think that I'd, whether the Ducati Cups come to its natural end maybe and it could have been replaced by something but then what do you replace it with and what where's the market at with bike sales now it is more your it tourists is, sit up and beg so I, I get us. it really get it and, but it's not really for me mm-hmm. what about um, congratulations David David so 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 bridge shoe bridge shoe bridge he just won the Ducati didn't he did he He's oh, did, oh, did, did he win the championship? Yeah. Well, I, well, I hope he did because I've just told everyone. Else. <laughs> <So> congratulations, son. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm actually commentating on David. So David's going over to race the Baldo 25 this weekend. Uh, oh, he's yeah. te- teaming up with Tom, Tom Oliver. I noticed you got that gig. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I've been commentating for years. I've been asked a few sport to do. Oh, fuck. He's well, a good looking lad. Well, he's an handsome bugger, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and he's got are. age on his side, mate. Yeah. And uh, yeah, well spoken for looking... a northern fella. Hey, I'm yeah. looking forward to it, though. It's yeah. shaping up to be a crack and tr- cr- uh, there's loads of Should we just riders. fill him in? <laughs> Won't be long before I'm doing hospital radio from the hospital bed on that fucking home, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to bear with China in your hand. Come on, <laughs> nurse, I've pissed me. Sam. <laughs> Did I tell you I used to be sponsored by Telephone? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so um, yes, yeah, so Baldor, you're looking forward to it then? Really looking forward to it, yeah. It's one thing that before I, I started commentating on, I wasn't really interested in watching it that much. I, it's not a, a series that I've followed, but by um, obviously I've ha- sort of had to and and I've really got into it. They call you the encyclopedia now, don't they? Who? The Eurosport commentators. No, <laughs> they do. do. I they? think they've made a few comments on it. It's, saying, oh, like the encyclopedia. Do, Chris, I, you work there, for God's sake. Come on, I'm not here, so. I've not heard that one. But. I'd love to go to, to Suzuka as, as a guest. Not as not as a punter and not even a commentator, but to be able to get in and look at the stuff that's over there, that Japan bring out that. I would, to be honest, I, I would like a bash. I would like a bash at World Endurance myself. To be honest, I've spoke to a few lads that are doing it, and the it's obviously a completely different challenge. But there's loads of British riders that are going out yeah. at the moment. Are, 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 are you selling it like West, I'm West part of the commentating it? team? I will give you lots of shout outs. <laughs> yeah. Aslan's doing it. Aslan's doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. won the Zuka. Westmall. It's Westmall in there. Westy does he, it all the time. He's just quite well. Yeah, he's just quite. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I like it. It's, it's a very different format of racing. I'm, I'm surprised I haven't been offered it. Anyway. I've won T side uh, moped mayhem a few times now. That's so I can't, I don't, I'm heavily, heavily invited. Heavily no limits endurance race. I'm that fucking old now. <laughs> God almighty. I'm hoping I've that. even put a post if anyone need a rider this weekend. Nope. <laughs> Rough, yeah, I'm hoping. Uh, Chris... I, think they've, I think they must have seen me other post of I'm that old now. I'm struggling to get a fucking bath. So, yeah, what are you going to do with a race? But I did. I went, I went around Dalton Park yesterday on a track day then. You walked in here fine. I couldn't. It's good. Watch me stand up. <laughs> I'll just fall off the floor. And I just, it, there were some bits that were great. There were some bits that were horrible. Um, and I put a post on my Facebook last night that I can't. I'm going to build some over winter and have a, a little race next year. Um, be, do, do you'll only be club stuff, but just to, just to go and have a crack because okay. there were bits I loved and there were bits I hated. And I, some of it was, it, it was embarrassing. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? But bearing in mind, I haven't rode a bike in anger since 2016, since my, my big crash at Alton Park. Um, and then I, you won't really know about this. So I snapped me, I'd already got a rod in from snapping my femur. Is that in the rugby? No, 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 this is this is previous crash at, at racing. But mate, they snapped the ball of my hip off, me, off of my femur, the top. And when they screwed it in, um, they actually put the thread into the ball, but they, led, they left nothing on the femur. So my leg, I thought was healing away, and they put the screws in that were 22 mil too long because of the swelling. So then my femur just kept separating away from me. Yeah. And I just thought, well, it hurts a little bit, but it's not that bad. Uh, not realising I were making a right mess of myself. I'll just get this picture up for, for Dom to look at. No, I won't. Because I can't just find to it. to mention but, as well, um, obviously we spoke about Tommy Bridewell. Tommy Bridewell's actually joining the commentary team this weekend. For, for the Baldo? For, for the Baldo, yeah. So it's standing. Jack Burnagle's back as well. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Is he? Jack the Knife, he's yeah, back. Yeah. Me- mega looking forward to, c- to catching up with them. Yeah, are you actually going to see them? Because you do... Oh, yeah, you're, all, you're all together. Oh, I meant. Say hi to Jack from us. Yeah, I will do. 
Um, also, just a shout out mentioning the British riders in the World Endurance Championship. But Gino Rea obviously had that massive, a massive crash at Suzuka, and um, it's just part. Of, what, sorry, sorry. Um, Gino Rea had a massive crash and life changing mm. injuries. Uh, there's actually a GoFundMe page that's been set up to to help for, with his rehab, but he's in a real serious condition, oh, and God, uh, the, basically, uh, it is possible that he can make a full recovery, but it's it's. Uh, basically like the quality of his care is like really important so just if anyone's yeah, interested the, I'll, yeah. I'll i'll post the link in yeah, the, uh, things sorry mate what you just yeah i was just just showing dom the picture of why it, it kind of escalated from so you can see that they've screwed the thread right into the ball Ooh. and the brakes there and they let so once the swelling went down the screws were just my, back, my, my leg was just sliding in there and bearing in mind i'd brought me the me back in six places of the butterflies as you call them on them so i brought six of them off I broke my shoulder, and dislocated that, and I rode nine weeks later at uh, at Snet. Came back. Well, I rode the week before. I did a test day there. Like okay, right, no bed. And I'm telling him they lifted me onto the bike, and I'm going, I'm fine, I'm fine. I was far from fucking fine. I was, I was rough. And then I tried to do thrust, and then it, it separated again. So that's why I've got a false hip now through that, because it just it, they got necrosis in the bone because there wasn't enough blood flow. So they tried to save it at, at Leeds Hospital. I had about two, about five operations. Looks like a sharp bite now. Make Class. sure I look beautiful, cock on us. It's a right fucking mess. Uh, but they tried to save it and didn't, so I ended, ended up with a false hip. It's just that, but yeah, but that's the racer's mentality. Like, you weren't 100% and you'll do anything to ride, won't you? And you tell everyone you're fine, and you're not. You know you're not, but fuck okay. it. We're not, fo- we're not footballers, are we? We're not yeah. dancing around, chasing a bag of wind. I'll tell you what, I've got one more question before... Sorry, Quizzy. I've got one more question. And I think a lot gonna of people... going to have to call it a day. We've been on for it. Be, be right. Stop being a shite bag. You're <laughs> professional. Get over yourself. But anyway, I, I must, I must, must ask, because there'll be loads of people to begin this interview probably thinking the same question I had. Why couldn't you have kept the professional paying rugby job Right, like there were, was it good money? Was it? Good it was. Money? It was fair. It was and, fair. And, money, and right. I can I, I can kind of answer your question before it's, before you've asked. Well, it. let me finish. Well, so it's a bit like it's a it's a winter sport. You're making money. You're training. You're keeping fit. Oh, yes, obviously high impact. You know, con- uh, concussions, everything like that. But there'll be people out there going, why, 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 why couldn't you make that work? And why, why well, didn't it? It was rugby league, so it wasn't rugby union. The the Southern Fannies game. Um, <laughs> So the Super League was played, and the ass yeah, of Southern Shandy drinking bastard. I love you all, Southerners, by the way. Uh, but, but in rugby terms, I'm talking about now. Um, and rugby league was summer league. Super League was 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 through the summer. Ah, and there we are. There's the absolutely answer. no way you could put your body through the torch of playing rugby, even in winter, and then oh. racing bikes in summer. And rugby always was a means to an end. Um, racing was the love. So when I got a kind of a chance to do it, and then thought. I'm not bad at this and did all right in super stock and then got asked. I mean, even when I got the super bike ride, we went for went to Hareth for 10 days and Stuart Higgs had phoned Malcolm and said, he can't go in super bikes. He's done nothing. And Malcolm went, well, look, we want to give him a try. And Stuart set a time for me to achieve at Hareth, which uh, I did. And then we come back to Britain. We did the first test at Snet and he said, you've got to achieve this time or you won't be racing this season. But then a lap into it, um, someone, Dean Thomas, the nicest man in the paddock, coming to the start, finished it, took me out and I snapped, broke me, my left leg. What? And about, from the crash, I got this. is Because, you know, like on a test day, they had slightly less marshals back then. And I've stood up and thought, fucking hell, that hurts. That's not right. But I walked off and climbed over the barrier on the other side of the start, finished it. So everyone thought I was all right. And I'm sat down waiting for ambulance to come and nobody come for about half an hour and I'm laying there with a broken leg. But because I'd walked off, they didn't know and couldn't see. <laughs> it is incredible because, like, you know, we, we talk about on this show all the time about how, you know, talent. Would you say you're a talented rider? I think if I would have stayed... No, no. I, I worked very hard. I worked very hard. What age were you when you went in 20, 23, 24 before I'd raced. I was, I was I mean. fairly old and, and, and literally I'd done nothing. I'm not kind of... No motocross, know, making, no racing. Oh, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd had motocross bikes and stuff as a kid and I'd had, I passed my test when I was 18 and bought an IGV 250. Then rugby said, you can't do that. So, so no, it was literally a track day then a year in at New Era, it's in, that's in incredible. Progress. And but I just but I worked I worked hard to to be able to do it. And like I say, my goal was to get to British Superbikes, not to win it because I knew there was never any chance. 
You know, people say, would you want to go to Worlds? I'll be honest, I was never going to do that. But I got to do what I wanted to do. Oh, God, I'm you know, not I'm, taking anything away. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it just so shows that you Talent-wise, if I would have stayed in the Superstock classes instead of going straight to Superbike, I could have done something and been maybe top 10 within that and, and had fun. But I was just adamant that what, what I wanted to do. Good man. And then after that, man. I got I left the tenor for men team because that went because the pots wanted. So then I rode the MV Augusta, which was one of the nicest chassis I've ever rode. But the bike what was, was the bike like? Oh damn it! Yeah, well down on power, um, and it liked to, it liked to discharge its oil. It didn't want to keep it. It wanted to share the love. <laughs> I remember coming in and uh, James Aiden grabbing me on microphone, and uh, he says, "What's happened, there? They were at Cadwell, and MV had blown up." And I said, "Looking at the amount of oil on my fucking boot, it's another electrical fault. Ten p switch, I'm just walled off." <laughs> Class. Class. Yeah. Then, then I did the Evo Cup with with uh, Dave Tyson. Then Super Stock did my own thing. Had a couple of years out. Then 16 Road for Tony Dexter in the uh, in in his team, and that's when I, I brought my leg and not really done anything since. I've done really no laps up until doing the track day yesterday. And phew, that record this? pace I heard. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the only record broken was the t the quick the, how quick I got to the bar after. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, got a few Patreon questions, but just before I go for them, uh, do you want to say about what you what you're up to this weekend? Yeah, so I'm uh, not competing all of us mount, but I'm doing my first ever uh, British round of Supermoto. So, oh, I've heard you on about this on the, on the podcast before. Ah, so yeah. I've always wanted to do it. So thank you to uh, Mo Motion Focus, as I like to call him, Focus Focus. He did his moment of focus. Uh, <laughs> no, so he set the whole deal up at Nora Sport, and it's um, no, I'm really look really looking forward to it. Really, really looking forward to it. So. Now, just uh, obviously by the time this podcast goes out, it'll be after the weekend. But um, good luck in. <laughs> in, in <laughs> Uh, in spirit anyway I would, I'd just like to pass on my uh, all my best wishes to the team at Oliver's Mount I hope they have a fantastic weekend uh, Andy, Wendy and all of the team there I know how much effort they're putting in good luck to Dave on the commentary as well and uh, Dave Neal's doing the commentary oh is, it, is, it, yeah. is he going up doing it he did say he was, he was talking about doing it so and, uh, yeah I really hope and obviously good luck to all of the competitors there as well um, yeah. I, it's a big shame that I can't make it with it, uh, being in London but I, yeah I really hope it's a good weekend and obviously best of luck in the Super Moto as well um quick few questions on the patrons so i've got ty Kinton. are you enjoying the pundit side of racing what was the worst bike you raced so just I'm at, well with well, the pundit thing you, you join duncan and larry on the commentary like yeah. bsb radio don't you yeah uh giving the technical analysis the technical side of things telling people what i can see what i know yeah. which is like you said, normally I'm I'm an idiot in the paddock, which masks the fact that I'm actually quite shy and, and terrified of things. But you just you big big bold and brash people leave you alone, don't they? But yeah, the technical I'd like to work on the technical side of bikes. I'm helping a couple of riders this this season um, alongside their crew chiefs offering advice, which is going quite well. Good. Um, as I say, if you win a championship as a crew chief in your fish year in Superbike Cup, you're doing something right because that's what I took over with Tristan. Mm. So yeah, no, I, I really do like it. I did, never wanted to be the main presenter. Because yeah. I'm, I, that's not my job, and I'm not good at that. What I'm good at is interjecting with someone that comes along with a question, say, "Why is that bike doing that?" And you know, some of it I wink, well, a lot of it. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no but, so, yeah, but, so no, I, re I really enjoy it, and it, and it's something I pursue further. I mean, I've done a TV show called Bike World where they sent me to side in you. I nearly killed myself riding off a cliff on a multistrada there because they sent me to do a recce, and I just didn't see the sea was there, and I come to a stop and what went, oh. Oh, I put stand down and sat down for a minute. I even I had to sit down for a minute. That day, like, look, oh, that were close, that were close. But yeah, so oh, yeah, it's something that. I'd like to, to to pursue a lot more. Yes, uh, Timu, hey up, chaps. A couple of questions for Michael. How much further do you think? I'll read the whole thing and then we can maybe pick one. How much further do you realistically think you could have got with an opportunity in a bigger team? Also, be interesting to hear if you had any offers of top. Uh, rides also what was the difference in training and fitness between rugby and racing a superbike hope you're all well lads pick one of them uh, right as far as team goes no because there's there's elements of, of the racing post uh tenor for men that, that didn't just go right so it was never going to be an option and i'd done what i wanted to do so i was happy to kind of you know if something came up and a last minute offer was there to ride so no the the, the top team it was Never an ambition because it was never going to happen. Mm. Training wise, rugby league was all about kind of like I am now a much bigger type of fella. So I had to lose all that. I went from being 15 stone 10 to uh, 
82 kilos, which is about, it's about 13 stone, something like that. I couldn't go any lower than that. I tried and just had absolutely no strength left then. So cardiovascular, low weights, high reps for racing and, and quite the opposite for, for for rugby. That was a lot of sprint training. I was one, I could once do kind of 100 metres, more than sub 12 seconds. I was quite quick on my feet. Mm -hmm. And now I can't walk When you said more... more uh, uh, yeah, like so, lower than twelve seconds. That's pretty fast, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was fullback for for rugby league. So I was the right. first line of defence, last line of attack, whichever. So, but I was a top try scorer for for many a year at club level. It was, it's just a greedy bastard. What I learned at rugby league simply because when I first started, I was very small, mm. and I got battered by one big bloke, and that was me. Then I thought, well, if I step round you, I'm not getting hurt. So I just looked really flash. I and mean, it was just because I was terrified of getting battered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not like... Did you ever play rugby? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what position did you play? Scrum off. Were you? Oh, you... gobby little bastard. You're damn right. That then runs an IBI it's forward. And You're you damn right. Come here, you yeah. good at rugby. I'm just chucking the egg. That's it. Chucking the egg, mate. But I barely used to chuck it. I used to just run at the biggest <laughs> lad and just see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the face for rugby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chipped all my teeth. Got rid of So f a few questions. I'll choose this one. If you could choose to ride for a current or previous BSB Ooh. team, which would it be? Thanks, guys. Current. Current. Yeah. Quite controversial, but just because he's been in the racing since I've been there, and so it's not a big team as such. But it would be. I, I always wanted to ride a bike for PR for John at PR just Hi. because we get on so well I always wanted one shot yeah and he kind of looked at me and went Michael I like you mate for not even John he's from Scouse isn't he I he mean, is yeah. Yeah, yeah and like basically I like you mate but you're a big shit so no <laughs> and you can't stay on a fucking bike so the nice uh, and yeah. a lo lovely team we're often obviously next to them <laughs> in garages and um, the yeah yeah, Ray Stringer's working with Luke Marcy, I think. Yeah, I think. well, Ray Stringer's been with me throughout my career, really, because he start when I was at New Year, he was helping Pennsylvania. So Ray's always been a bit of a fatherly figure. If Luke me. can um, get his shoulder fixed, I think he'll have a strong finish to the season. And like well, they did all right on the Kawasaki's with Ray. Mm. You know, the the podiums and the wins were Ray was there, wasn't he? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's, and I yeah, think that's just... why I'm thinking the family thing's going to fit and. Ray, Luke's going back to something he knows. Mm. Nice friendly team that they sort yeah. of help out. No, yeah. if I, you know what it's like. Yeah. A BSB you always need something or things, and you're just next door. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're a proper nice group of people. Um, and then previous teams, Revy Racing Red Bull, just because they looked the absolute nuts and the bikes were mega. Mm. Yeah, so that's my team. I like it. We've got anything to wrap things up for your end? No. Yeah. Um, Can I just say thank you to? Rob that I've come down with, who is now my business partner in the little venture we're doing, not on the size of Global Motor, but we're building and selling track bikes now. Right. Purely more the budget aspect side of things, you know, you're five and six thousand pounds and uh, we're hoping to, to sell or to rent. To, to sell, to, to purely to sell, you know, we're, we're taking them in and making it the best bike it can be on, on, on a budget because, you know, times are out for people and people still want to go on track. So we're doing that and Rob's got many ideas about doing other things with insurance and claims and things like that. So we want to be like a little hub. But only a little hub, not like you, not like you. That it's is not me, what you've showed me today. That's mega. It's yeah. mega. But yeah, what's but the business called? You, uh, motorcycle stars. Thank God you got and that in because yeah, all this lovely it's... plugging into it, we never be like, <laughs> what was it called? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and, and and I'm on Facebook. If anybody wants to add me, I've, we don't have a page and website set up as yet because it's all quite new. We bought five or six bikes to kind of test the market, so we've been going. A bit too far with them as such, like preparation, but it, it's going all right, and we're, and we're enjoying ourselves out with minute chief. So yeah, he didn't uh, actually answer that, you know that, don't he? He's, <laughs> he's in the back. He he's in the background there. Going, like, what yeah, have, what like have I done? What have I done? <laughs> yeah, what, what have, have I, done? I done with this dick? But... <laughs> <laughs> no, I need a calm no, influence, and he's he's the calm influence on it all. Yeah. Hey, no, hey, good luck to the Perrier. It'll go absolutely fantastic. I mean, absolutely all the power to you, lads. All the power to you. And I have mentioned that in the last few episodes, but. Um, there's an opportunity uh, over on Lee Johnson's YouTube channel. There's an opportunity to win a bike through uh, Bennett's. They're giving away. Mm. Uh, so Lee's like restored a bike and uh, it's free to enter. So mm. if you head over to Lee's YouTube channel for that, uh, you're away racing this weekend. And then uh, weekend after we've got uh, Alton Park and Donington. So it's getting, it's busy time of the year. Do you know, yeah. earlier on in the season, there was quite a few months where I had one BSB, like almost per month or every three weeks. Mm. And you kind of, you sort of get over the weekend and get things and you know get all the bills paid and whatever and then you sort of regroup where then it's 
back, yeah. back, back. It's coming. Yeah. It's you know, it's tight. And um, yeah, it's I, I can't believe in three rounds in four weeks, and then the season's over. It's just yeah, mad. it's mad, and it doesn't feel like it started two minutes ago. But yeah, good luck to you for all. Good luck to you and your super yeah. supermoto race. It's been an absolute pleasure and an honour. Come on, you know I've been kind of giving Chrissy a nudge giving it when you're getting me on and I thought okay, you're getting that far into people it's going to be called chasing the fucking Graham racing before I get on I thought they've used everybody up and I'm still not getting on they're thinking he ain't now nah, balls to him so yeah th- no yeah, thanks thanks a lot guys no we're definitely having you back on <laughs> I, I really enjoyed we've it. actually broken a rule because we uh, we do sort of have a, an unwritten rule that if anyone requests if anyone <laughs> if anyone asks to come on the podcast they're automatically blacklisted <laughs> so if, uh, yeah we'll like swerve that one <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, know, I know I did mention it earlier. I, I did mention it earlier, but um, I just want to uh, re say as well the it was such a massive well done to Hayden Stat and the Stat or the whole Stat family. Uh, the the really put everything that they have as a family into into racing and to to see him he won a, a british auto championship a few years ago and uh, to see him step up and work so hard and through injuries and whatever and to take the british championship on an 85 from from you know like what they do i just think it's m- brilliant so uh, massive massive well done yeah. to them oh i've got dom a bag of pork scratches because he was down south and i thought he might want some oh proper. what a fella there you go they'll 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 be brilliant going up north <laughs> <laughs> back north young and back north there you go back back into the hills son yeah. back into the hills I'll tell you what you're lucky i'm here mind to finish off the show go on i'll, I'll I think I'll bring it up on the next one. No, no, Nearly basically, I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, right? So, t- <laughs> like today, I'm not going to grass up the company, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like basically, like a big bandit chipper. We'll have to, we'll have to get Grace to put the clip on uh, on the end of this. Big bandit chipper that can essentially eat like a small car. You know what I mean? So the lads are hand feeding this with brush. Now I'm up this ash tree stripping it down, and all me, me rope got tangled in the branches, and that was unbeknown to me. And so I'm up the top of this thing, and then the tree starts bowing over. And I'm getting ripped out the tree. Literally, it's pulling on the harness. I'm going, what the f- is that? Look down, and me ropes in the chipper, getting eaten up. And by the by God's grace, the rope snapped on Snaps. me, and I just yeah. went like flying off the other side. And I'm like, all right, you know, the, I've I've personally never seen this happen before. You know what I mean? I'm thinking, oh wait, shit happens. And the lads were like, oh sorry, 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 came down, and all the lads, man, they were honestly, they were there was white as this table, and they were like. I'm like, what's the matter with you? They went, have you, have you not seen the video? What, what what video are you, what are you on about? I actually put it on my Instagram not too long, like not too long ago. But like I say, we'll get Grace to do it. But this video of this lad, they get this dummy and they put the rope in the chipper and it's just, he just tips over slowly, slowly, slowly. And he just goes, it's like, it's like something they like made up. He just flies into this wood chip and just gets obliterated because he got a flywheel on it that's turning at a mega RPM. And he just got spun into this. Like when they so pull, that was like, pull a car year. into a wall, basically, on yeah, the crash test dummy times. Honestly, it's, 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 it is. Yeah. It's, 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 it is. Show me early. Show me early. Oh, God, no, it, it is met. That, how was, that was me acting like I'd not seen it. You've just killed that, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> killed it, man. <laughs> That's you know, been we, part we, of we had, we, had a, we, we, had, we had a few drama there, <laughs> full on drama. There. But uh, no, I tell you what, mate. I, like, we'll, we'll put that on because it was yeah. just that's another near miss. There you go. I'm, I'm using these lives up quickly, but there we go. But yet again, it's been great having you on, and thank you so much for coming down, not Yorkshire, from Cheshire, Cheshire. to Hoshen. And our last podcast, we had uh, yellow lenses. This like uh, blue lenses. What oh. we're having next? What we're having next week? Elton John flamingo glasses. <laughs> that's the next one. So no, it's um, no. I've got obviously some. Um, I've got some, I'm, I'm meeting a different surgeon and we're going to be discussing plans and everything like that. But the good thing is everything can get fixed. Everything will get fixed. It's now just timing. It's all about the timing of it. So it's like at first you're thinking, oh, shit, 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 you know. But they're like, oh, everything's just minor to them. Everything's really, really small scale to them. But it's like to each individual, so when your legs knocked and your shoulders knocked, you're like, how are they, how are they going to fix this? And it's yeah. it's, it's simple yeah. stuff. It's just yeah. getting it done. So I, um, I haven't mentioned this to you yet, but on the when I was listening, I'm not getting the sack. Am I? No, when I was, <laughs> when we I was, start this together, but I'm getting sacked. How does this work? <laughs> when, I, when I was listening to the last podcast back with Alan Carter, there's there's a few things that sort of really like stuck with us, and oh, um, one of them was, do you know the analogy of the salmon swimming upstream mm. and it and obviously he was talking about mental the mental health clock and yeah. stuff like that it just got us thinking i've 
I got a feeling that we're in for like a real tough winter coming up for like a lot of people, a hell of a lot of people for, for various reasons. And I was just trying to think of like what, if anything, what we could do on the podcast to like help. So I'm going to have a think of, and maybe if we'll, we'll have a chat off air about it and see if we'll, but I, if, yeah, if there's anything that we can do, I think it would be good to use this platform to help sort of thing. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have a thing. We're gonna have you on every week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll soon bore you. Don't no, no, you're not boring me. 100, percent you're not 100, percent but like, no, but Chris, that was a great idea, and I think yeah, we'll definitely have to get some sort. So. A safe journey back. Massive thank you to our sponsors, Colchester Kawasaki, and to all of our lovely patrons. We've actually had a few new patrons this week. Thank so God, because you know out. how much diesel is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> big shout out to them, and uh, yeah, have you got anyone else to, other than your your business? Uh, just a quick shout out to be next door neighbour. Mike and Carol, um, <laughs> which is weird. No, because we, when we, we're swingers. When we, <laughs> when, when we, when me and my girlfriend moved into where we moved in now, he's got a beautiful garage at the end of the road, and he saw the first bike arrive. And me and Rob were still looking for premises, as we still are now, to, to further the business. And he come running out with his key. I've not known this guy for five minutes. Straight out, there's the key. Go to the keys. Whatever you're doing, use it. It's yours. And now we've got six, seven bytes. Literally wants nothing for it, just wants to see us succeed. So until what we get his premises sorted, we, you know, we've got a workshop and it's a nice workshop as well. It's beautiful. But yeah, so thank you to them. Hello to my missus. All right, Muddy That's... Dragon. That's it. No, yeah, just <laughs> let's uh, let's get to the end of the BSB season. Hope the fans have a great time and, and everyone stays safe. Proper. Definitely. Well, a nice way to end. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Well, thanks very much, mate. Take care. See you in a bit. Chasing the racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki, part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles.